Hi, my name is Brian Swoboda. It's mid-June right now, and that means we've got the whole summer ahead of us. For most people around the world, summer means beaches, sunscreen, and new swimsuits. But for most of us mineral people, we learned a long time ago that we're not like others. No, for us, we get excited about the arrival of June because that means it's time for the St. Marie Aumin Show. The St. Marie Show is one of the four most important mineral shows in the world and is one of the two major shows that takes place in Europe. This show in the eastern portion of France attracts some of the most important mineral dealers in the world and truly exemplifies some of the best things about France. From where I am right now, St. Marie is almost half a world away. But it's my job to find the hottest things that are coming to the market in the mineral world. So come with me now as we travel to France to discover the allure of this show and search out what's hot in St. Marie. It's taken me two days of traveling, but I've finally arrived here in France. There are a number of cities that I can fly into when I come to the St. Marie Show, cities like Frankfurt or even Zurich. But my favorite gateway city is Paris, which I think is one of the greatest cities in the world. I usually spend a day or two resting from the long trip, visiting friends, and taking some time to see the sights before I start the drive to St. Marie. So we're here in the Luxembourg Gardens, right in the heart of uh, Paris. And this garden is so beautiful, it's huge. It's the most popular garden in all of Paris, and it's significant for a number of reasons. Um, one of my favorites is that um, Victor Hugo wrote about this garden when he wrote about uh, Marius Pontmercy and Cosette falling in love. This is where they met for the first time in his book, uh, Les Miserables. Also, if you look behind me, you can see that there's a statue that looks amazingly like the Statue of Liberty that we have in New York Harbor. Well, the artist, the French artist Bartholdi, who created the Statue of Liberty, needed to create a life-size version of the statue before he created the giant one that was dedicated to us by the people of France in 1886. And this statue behind me is the one that he actually originally created. So that was the uh, forerunner to our Statue of Liberty. Also, the reason I'm here in the Luxembourg Garden is because in the city of Paris, there are three fantastic mineral museums that all complement each other. You have the Sorbonne Museum, you have the National Museum, and you have the Paris School of Mines. And the Paris School of Mines is located right here in the Luxembourg Garden. So we're about to head out over there and take a look at one of these three great museums. Uh, maybe next year we'll get a chance to look at uh, one of the other two museums in, uh, in greater detail. So come on with me and let's go visit the Paris School of Mines. After coming into the front entrance of the building for the School of Mines, there's this beautiful staircase that you have to come, come through. You have one landing here and then you have the main landing up there right in front of the actual entrance to the museum. But coming up here, you can't help but just appreciate and just love the beauty of these wonderful slabs of different kinds of minerals and sedimentary rocks that they have inlaid into the wall here. You've got... Actually, I'm only kind of kidding. While I do appreciate these panels, these aren't slabs, these are actual paintings. Each one of these panels is painted to look exactly like natural rock. I thought that was kind of fun to feature, so let's keep on going and uh, we're almost at the top of the staircase. Okay, well now we're at the very top of the staircase and we're at the entrance to the actual school. I'm gonna ring this bell and we'll see if uh, someone can come and uh, let us in. Good to see you. Why, How are you thank doing? You. How was your I'm, trip? It's a long, tiring trip, but I'm finally here. Well, welcome to Paris and welcome to the School of Mines. Thank you, thank you. This is uh, probably one of my favorite cities in the world, and this is such an incredible museum to have here in the city. What about I invite you to come in? Because I would love to. For that, right? Okay. Let me open the door. 
you are now in the first room of the museum. So that's kind of a, the showy pieces that we show here. Of course, we will have plenty of other big, nice minerals, but this room is really special, so it can tell the visitor a story about the fact that minerals are naturally beautiful, and then we can introduce them more to the rest of the collection about like more specificity. I think that's probably the best pyromorphite from Spain. It's a calcite from very close to Paris. It's a Fontainebleau calcite. So I think that's fun for people to actually see that next to them they have actually cool looking minerals and crystals here. And of course, a lot of people come to the, the School of Mines, Ecole des Mines, to see this Franklinite and Woolamite. So this is a fun piece, you know, it's, it's a big thing that has been uh, repaired as well, but it's so huge, so big, I think that's probably the best Franklinite uh, on Willemite, well, ever. So that's, that's really a lot of fun. And this is more of the uh, didactic room here, when you can know, learn how, what is a mineral, what is rock, uh, what crystallography here is. And actually, if you see up there, this guy is called uh, René Juste Aoui. Uh, he's the first curator at the School of Mines here at l'Ecole des Mines. Uh, he then go, went to uh, the Natural History Museum. But Aoui is the discoverer of uh, more modern crystallography. So I don't know if you see it, but he's actually holding a piece of calcite in his right hand. And this is very symbolic because supposedly he was holding it, measuring the angles and doing all kinds of studies about it and eventually dropped the calcite on the floor. And as you know, calcite is very fragile, so he broke into thousands of pieces. And when he bent over to grab the pieces back, he noticed that the pieces had exactly the same shape as the original crystal he was holding in his hand. So supposedly he said everything has been found. That's supposedly what he said. But what by that he meant that there is something here. Minerals, if when you break them, you have this elemental piece, building block if you want, and repeating them over and over again and you have this perfect shape macroscopically. So he began actually breaking a lot of crystals, but by breaking all those minerals, he noticed that you had seven and only seven different shapes of these elementary blocks that you could have. And that's actually what we present here is, you know, from cubic, quadratic, hexagonal, rhombohedral, down to tri triclinic. So that's actually the person that discovered the seven system of crystallography. We have also nice showy pieces again, big, uh, quartz here from uh, the Alps, small, but it's not that small for what it is because it's a diamond on the Kimberlites. Actually, I was measuring it yesterday and it's seven, 17 millimeters across, so it's an amazing diamond, not glued, not glued to the rock, it's actually in place and that's, that's really making it something exceptional here. This uh, diamond for me is the perfect representation of what a diamond should be with a little clue about its age just inside it. And then, you know, these are the two small rooms here. Um, the rest of the gallery is actually very impressive and we're gonna go there right now. Um, I was telling you earlier that um, I was packing things to go to Sainte Marie so I thought that you would want to see some of the nice minerals I have. I have a bunch of things that are packed already, so I'm not gonna uh, unpack everything, but I, I left a few unpacked things for you to look at. I think that, you know, we are bringing lots of nice specimens this year to Sainte Marie, a lot of them. And I'm sure that a lot of people are gonna appreciate this huge Brazilianite. It's, I mean, from what I know, at least the best, biggest, brightest crystal. It's a single crystal with a bit of mica left on it. And you see it's just perfect. The color is amazing. Uh, I can turn it around for you. It's just the back here, but really the, you see the crystal shape is just perfectly and amazing. That's one of my favorite pieces here at, at the museum, that's for sure. St. John Island Peridot. Beautiful, beautiful. Again, one of my favorites here that is going to St. Marie. You see the size of the, the crystal, which is pretty good, but what I love about it is it's really nicely shaped, perfect crystal all the way around. And you see the top that is great. I mean, and look at the back as well. It's just a wonderful piece of 
Peridot. Again, that's really one of my favorites. This is a nice yellow fluorite from France, from Giromani in France. So I will tell you Giromani, so I know that the fluorite people are going to be all excited about. Uh, you see some actually blue tops inside um, the fluorite, but what makes it so spe special is actually the fact that it's one of our first piece here at the museum. Uh, I don't know if you can see the dates here on this old label, but it says uh, 1770. So of course, we have to see some American, we have to show some American mineral, and that's a Pala uh, tourmaline as well. Again, very nice, it comes from, uh, it's actually, I, don't, I can't remember the date exactly, but it's very from one of the first founds in, uh, uh, in Pala, so very nice but it's blue topaz from Russia. And I've not seen something like that before. And you see like it's on a smoky quartz here. And you have the chassis coupe right here. That goes with it. Very old piece. Again, you see the nice old box. Look at this. Again, one of my favorites. And they go so well together, you know, that's we have, we are really good in French minerals as well. Of course, we have worldwide minerals, but our, our French ones are just stunning, especially for the historic old pieces. All right, this is a, a emetite rose from Brazil. It's big, it's great, it's showy. I'm gonna show you the back. Look at this, wow. it's great. It's like a helmet. <laughs> right? I mean, again, we specialize in big and nice minerals here. So I think that this piece is going to represent very well uh, Paris School of Mines, Min Paris Tech. So I think that this one is going to be a killer for the show. That is a killer piece. Yes. Okay, one last time around because it's fun. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to put it back because it begins to be heavy. <laughs> and I'm going to pack it nicely. Brian, I, I have, uh, as you see, I'm not finished packing here, so I'm going to continue that now. And uh, I will uh, see you in St. Marie. So travel safely, everybody. And I will see you back in St. Marie with all those nice pieces uh, on the exhibit there. Well, great. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for your Bye. time. Bye. After a day or two in Paris, I'm rested up and ready to hit the road. It's a five hour drive to get from Paris to St. Marie, but the highway is extremely well maintained. And although I don't speak any French, an open mind, friendly attitude, and determination to communicate in any way I can is enough to get me by comfortably on the trip. One thing this region is famous for is its wines, which becomes apparent once you start to see the numerous vineyards that cover the hills. Right now we're about half an hour away from uh, Saint Marie Aumin, and we're in the wine growing area of this region. As you can see, the vineyards go on up over the hill, up over that hill, beyond all the way up into the mountain. There's so many different vineyards here, so many great wines to taste and try. This is really a beautiful, excellent area to be in, most similar probably to our Napa Valley in California, but completely different and completely unique. This is part of the experience of being in Saint Marie Almin, and so after stretching my legs a little bit and taking a little bit of a break, we're just gonna shoot over that hill another half an hour and we should be in town. We'll see you there. As you come into town, the first thing you notice is the quaintness. Then of course, because it's festival time, you start to see the tents. Two large areas in the center of town are blocked off for dealers and customers with minerals and treasures in tent after tent and even in some of the historic buildings. And speaking of buildings, one stands out apart from the rest. Everyone simply refers to it as the theater, and it houses some of the finest mineral dealers at the show. It's also a central meeting point for everyone at the show. In fact, we're supposed to be meeting with Christoph Goban, one of our show hosts on the steps of the theater. Let's go there now and say hi to Chris. Hi, and we are now on the stairs of the theater in St. Mario Min. The theater is the main place uh, to see the, the best displays with the main dealers. I wanted to, to make an interview of my, my good friend, Dottore Cristiano Ferraris, the, the curator of the Natural History Museum in Paris. 
in uh, in December 2014 you reopened the the museum yes because it had been closed well for too long too long for yes 10 <laughs> long years more than that and uh, yeah more because you you had to do a, a huge renovation yeah and finally you opened the the new gallery what exactly. what is the name of the new gallery Trésor de la Terre, if we want to translate it, is Treasure of the Earth. Okay. And uh, actually, no better title could, could be chosen because in the exhibit there are not too many objects. We, we show just around 600 objects, but it's a great, a good cho choice that we make. And so we try to, to show what is mineralogy, of course. No. We have around 10,000 specimens of the collection of uh, Colonel Vesigny, that was uh, the greatest collector in, uh, in Europe, I think, in France for sure, for sure for the time, but in Europe too. We are at the beginning of the 21st century, and uh, he made donation of uh, his collection both to our museum, the National History Museum of Paris, and to the, uh, at that time was still called uh, Ecole de Mines, now known as uh, Mines Paris Tech. Everybody is welcome, <laughs> especially children. You know. Yeah, of course. We have to grow up new generations, so. <laughs> you are children. right, you are right. So, Brian, now we can go inside and uh, make some interviews. I know that there is some dealers who have some really cool stuff to, to show us. So, let's go. Cheers, Cheers. <laughs> So, Sam. as usual, you have a wonderful display. Thank you. Okay. But, I heard that last weekend you were in Paris. Yes, we've been uh, in Paris. There was the auction from Alexandre Dulaire, okay. who um, sadly passed away earlier this yeah. year. Yeah. And um, his son, um, together with the auction house Rossini, had an auction running for um, his collection. And Ian and I thought we can combine this on our way down to Samurai. And um, yes, was present at the auction and were able to buy quite a few things. Um, yeah, I heard. Yeah. I heard that you have been quite happy at the auction and that you got. Uh, I sort of figured out I was really really natural dishes. with flashing that card and bidding. So <laughs> it felt really natural. So yeah. yes. I had the live report <laughs> during the action that you got some really good stuff. Very good stuff, um, yes. To explain to people, Alexandre Delerme has been collecting for about 40 45, years, yeah, yeah. 40, 45 years. And uh, he was a very good client of my father and he got some really good pieces. He had uh, an exceptional taste and he got some really good very pieces. Very great taste, yes. Including some old classic from Europe yes, we and do. Italy. Yes, and very I heard, great. I heard things. that you got a really nice suite no. of Italian stuff. So, Well, we couldn't just stop, you know, after we bought two, we just had to buy the rest as well okay. to make the suite complete. Yeah, what, what can I can understand because yes. uh, it was really good stuff. So very maybe well. let's have a look on the back room yes, because you have definitely. a huge back room on the Yes, on the I, left, of the I left Ian in the separate, <laughs> so you know, I'm front of house, so and Ian is in the separate, so he will show you a few goodies that we recently bought, um, including the specimens from the Alexandre de Leon collection, okay, okay. and some new finds. Um, yeah, you told and, me yeah, that yeah. you had some good surprise from, uh, from very, the Very, very great things, yeah, yes. I heard that there so were major. Well, there is maybe some good things from Brazil. Yes. So let's have a look. Nice, nice pinks and blues. Yes. Okay. So cheers. Well, until then, we keep on drinking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We are now in the back room with Ian uh, because he has some special stuff Salut. to show us. Here you have the cheddar. Always with at the, the strawberries. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Always at the show. It's my pleasure when I make a French person eat English cheese. <laughs> so here we are on camera for the first time. <laughs> it will be my first time with uh, British cheese. Let's see. So this is an English, uh, English organic cheddar from uh, close to our offices in Somerset. Okay. And uh, England's where it all began. This is the home of uh, cheddar cheese, so. Let's try. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I must admit that it is almost as good as French chill. Really. Really. <laughs> And even better, it's my, <laughs> my absolute pleasure to make the French people drink German wine with their English cheese. <laughs> but tonight we will have the real wine. <laughs> no, it's a great wine, really. We had the party yesterday, the, Ita the Italian party with Giancarlo and Cristiano, and we tried this wine, it was just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that you have been quite active at the auction. It was at the... Rossini house, yeah, and I heard that you got a bunch of really good pieces. Yeah, we were really pleased to get them because Alexander was uh, a man who really knew minerals, and uh, his taste was was very much for the classics, but really well crystallized. And uh, he had, yeah, he had a great taste yeah. in minerals. There's yeah. no question. But let me grab a few pieces. I just yeah. want to show yeah. you. This is one of my favorites. It's um. It's a Vesuvianite. Vesuvianite, yeah. yes, from Val d'Aosta yeah. in Italy. The, it's one of the very famous pieces in the De Lerme collection. He had a, a very nice suite of Italian minerals, and that one has been uh, pictured in the, in the Revista Italiana with, uh, with um, some uh, epidot as well. And uh, this one is probably the one of the famous Vesuvianite from uh, Italy. It was, uh, it was in an uh, in Italian collection. I cannot remember the name, yeah. uh, and, but this piece is very famous. Yeah, so we were, we were really happy to get this. And this is part of three, you know, a suite of three or four minerals that um, yeah. were from this area. And I was really happy to get the whole suite. Um, this is another. Mm -hmm. Which um, yes, which is magnificent for uh, and and it's funny because this piece and that one too were pictured in the same magazine. That one is a uh, Grossola Garnet uh, from Italy as well, and uh, it is very special because it is the elongated crystals. Very rare. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, and uh, it the. Um, is it that one? Let me check my... I need glasses now, you know. Yeah. Is it Clinochlor? Uh, I think the, it's on Clinochlor, yeah. The, the gross flower, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. It's Clinochlor. Yeah, super combination. And, uh, you know, it, if you remember in his little display room, yes. he had uh, yes. this one, this one, and the, the epidote, which I'm going to show you now, they were all together in the case. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, I, I don't know the equivalent anywhere else in, uh, in Europe. It's, uh, they're such yeah, fabulous for, specimens. From Italy, it's probably the, the best specimens. Yeah, it's the best I know of. Yeah, and yeah. You know, we're very happy to have them. They're just lovely mm -hmm. things. And you got the old suite, no? <laughs> yeah, no, we had to, but it's something I always wanted personally, yeah. and uh, we, um, we were very happy to get them. Lovely things, really lovely. Very sharp, the, the luster is just great. It's hard to find this kind of uh, specimen today. Huh? I can on, on, only come from collections. Yeah. This is really neat. <laughs> this is the, uh, the rose court, this is the mohawk. Look Just at a that. Beautiful, beautiful thing. This is from Brazil and it's just, you know, nature at its best. Something something beautiful. Did you get it in a collection recently? No, this uh, this was a pocket that came out uh, a few months ago and it's really um, yeah what, just a, a small new, pocket it's, this is it's, a it's from a new find this is what's hot in this is what's hot in San Marie 2016 really 2017 no 16 right. okay this, <laughs> <laughs> so really it's a new production yeah this is beautiful really beautiful just one small pocket they hit and that was it and while we were there we were really lucky because uh, they hit this beautiful pocket of aquas as well, which uh, be great color. Three or four weeks ago, it was in the, in the ground. It's a brand new find in Brazil and a very small it, mine. It's unbelievable because we haven't seen this kind of 
aquas from Brazil for decades. No, exactly. We are used to see from Medina, and it's a small production. How many pieces? Three good ones. Okay. Yeah. This was the probably the, the best one. And it's really nice because you've got a re-entrant growth yes, here. Yeah. I don't so. know if you can get the color, but it has it has already a, a good strong color. And uh, I was really shocked when he told me that it was a new piece because uh, aquamarine from Brazil, mm -hmm. from uh, and this what, what is the locality of that one? It's a very small uh, Galimpiru run uh, location. Coronel Morta, it's... Yeah, yeah. Coronel Morta, yeah. And I can tell you I have been running everywhere at the show and to find really new stuff from the source. It's really difficult this year. There is not that much no. new stuff. No. This is a Pakistani thing, yeah. Pakistan, Afghanistan, yeah. But you always get single crystals. It's something you're not going to get because it's you just never see it on Matrix. This is a really rare thing, um, crystallized uh, for Rhenanite. Really? Ma yeah, on Matrix. I've never, I've never, ever, ever, ever owned a good one on Matrix. No, quite it's exceptional. The, it, really no, well it's formed. The, the first one I see on Matrix. You're yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's no way that you were going to guess it. It's. Uh, it's a super, super thing. So you are, you, super. Are, you are very bad with me because you knew I could not find because it's a Matrix one, yeah. Thank, thank you, Ian. It's not often <laughs> I get to confuse you. You know more than most, and this is uh, that's a super thing. <laughs> <laughs> and is it a new find? Uh, yeah, this came to us uh, a, a little while ago, and it's. Um, I was just amazed. As soon as I saw it, it was... I just couldn't put yeah, it down. I can I've understand. never seen. I can I've never really seen understand. one before. Really super, super. Yeah. Cheers, Brian. Okay, we are now uh, at the entrance of the theater, and I am with Anton Vazel. How Hello, are you, Anton? Uh, good to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you again. Welcome in uh, in Saint Mary of Mines. So, I saw in your cases that you have. Uh, a new wolfenite from uh, from Iran. Can we can we yes. have a look at the? I had one the in Tucson show if you remember right, yes, and yes, I got another yes. very special I one. See. Let that me show you is, this piece. That yeah. one is even better than the one you had in. Uh, yes, I think so. Sun. It has uh, this one has particularly fine uh, orange color, very deep saturation of color. Mm -hmm. Actually, it reminds me of a San Francisco mine, yes, what they have found right. there. And it's the first time uh, this kind of wolfenite is coming from Iran in this top bright orange color in combination uh, with calcite. Yeah, it's, the coating and, is calcite. Yeah. And as you see, there is some reddish inclusion in this crystal. Actually, yeah. there are some, some small red spots on them. Mm -hmm. This is vanadinite. So vanadinite oh, okay. causes that strong saturation here. It's vanadinite. It's not vanadinite. mimetite. No, because this there is were vanadinite. Some with mimetite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Iran uh, provided some of the world best wolfenite. I think and, so. And uh, the first one were in the in the fifties when uh, when Pierre Barian, the curator of the Sorbonne Museum, went there, and he brought uh -huh, yeah. the first uh -huh. uh, red one from Chagarbodze, and uh, and from that time Iran has been very well known for world class wolfenite. Yeah. And, and then I saw this. Giant quartz. Yeah. <laughs> can Certainly. you, can yeah, you take it a, from the real monster. Sure, sure, I take it out from you. <laughs> yeah. uh, look at this oh, monster oh, good. quartz. <laughs> <laughs> this was found last year. This so, is a, a recent okay. find. So this was new, found in 2015. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. taken out of the pocket. Actually, I went to the Strala, as you will suppose, yeah, uh, and Actually, they found the pocket in 2014, but okay. in late summer, in September, and they were not able to mine it in, in this season because the winter was coming and snow yes, in the pocket. Yes, yes. So they mined the pocket last year, and you won't believe, but this was a huge pocket. He showed me the pictures of this pocket. Crazy. It, let, it, let me help you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah you turn it. It's, it's so remarkable because it has the luster on yes, all sides. Yes, yes. This yeah. pocket was like a dome. It was a pocket like six, seven meters wide. And in the center of the pocket, there was a calcite crystal which was one and a half meters in diameter. <laughs> and they could walk around this crystal. So this will give you an idea of the dimension crazy, it was. Crazy. And you have yeah. all the striation on, yeah, the, yeah. on the crystal. It's sparkling. Look, it's, 
I have blue because it's yeah. really heavy. It's, gonna, <laughs> it's maybe 35, 40 pounds, <laughs> maybe more. As far as I know, this is the second uh, big pocket they've ever hit there. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's produced crystals this size. The first one is very old and the crystals are very famous and in, in the museum in Bern on display. But uh, as far as I know, no, the, they, they never the found luster, a group the like this. They were only single crystals. The luster of the piece is amazing. Yeah, really, the luster is truly really remarkable. Yeah. And I see, Anton, that uh, you have been very active in the Alps as usual. Yeah. You have a this case, is one of my specialities. You have a of case certainly. full of minerals from, uh, from the European Alps and it's really a mix of the main species we can find from the pink fluorite, uh, from the Mont Blanc in France, the epidote from Austria, uh, the, the, rose, uh, the rose of hematite from Switzerland and the amethyst and yeah, it's course. really the Cavradi here. It's yeah. amazing. Your case is really great. Let me show you this uh, fantastic window. This is from a Sinkenstock area, which is I very, was sure. very famous. I was sure. It has the typical great color yeah. from Sinkenstock in, uh, in Switzerland. You see, the window is sitting on the matrix and has some regular quartz aside crystals. Let me take it's the piece. a dream of every collector. <laughs> on, I think. A, on a small, yeah. on a small matrix. Yeah. This was uh, found by the Rufibach family. Uh, they found this pocket in 1962, as you know. So it's a very, very yeah. old find, and they mined for many years. And I think yeah, this is one of the very best windows. Probably the Rufibach pocket is the most famous one in the Swiss Alps for, I think so. for decades. Yeah. Uh, first of all, for the quality, because yeah, the the Rufibach pocket you see, but, uh, has this special col color and this this special brightness, but also because they found not only quartz but also some great uh, fluorides. Yes, indeed. They also uh, had some very very fine fluorides. You saw some yeah, in, in my case over yeah. there. Yeah. And there was also a tragic accident with the Rufibach family. Unfortunately, very very unfortunate. Yeah. And Three family, uh, family members died, as yes, you know, yes. Hans Rufibach and yeah. his son and another family member died in yeah. a very yeah. tragic accident. Yeah. People must really realize that the, the guys who climb in the Alps are, are real heroes because... Yeah, they, they risk their lives sometimes. They have some, very, some re real risk and uh, how many people died already just because of the, the patient they have to, yeah. to, to go and collect quartz. Uh, in, yeah. the, in the Alps. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's really a piece of jewel. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you another very fine me. Alpine piece. Well, it's from the recent mining period, but not brand new. This was found in uh, 2009. It's a fantastic epidote with chrysolite. Uh, from Knappenwand, as yeah, you with certainly know. Yeah. Uh, it's a floating Super. specimen. It's uh, crystallized all mm -hmm. the way around. You see the nice combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think this is the first time that this combination comes out so nicely. Yeah. Because in former they did days, not clean the they, they would, they would clean off piece. the bisolite. Yes. Yeah? yes, yes. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> just lose it because yeah. they don't care about it, mm -hmm. whatever. But no, see, it's the a, luster, it's, it speaks for itself. It's, it's really a very top, good top example quality. of the best uh, epidote from, uh, from Campen Van that we can find. Uh, yeah, I think so the, too. The, the, the display the top, top is quality. great. Let me show yeah, you. These are these are even transparent. You yeah. see, you see the color of the crystals. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are truly transparent. Yeah, and the, the bisolite gives something more. On yeah, the sure, it gives a special touch to it. At the origin, they were cleaning the piece. They, yeah. they were removing the bisolite on the. Yeah, on which the is wrong from yeah. our yeah, yeah, perspective of now. Yeah. I agree. As we know, I yeah. agree. So I was very lucky to get this, and I was surprised to see yeah. this. Nice I know Kalina what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> it's from the very famous locality in uh, in Brittany, in France. Yeah. It's a, right. a, a Galina pseudo after after paromorphite. It's an exquisite example of what we can find. Yeah, the, I especially the, like the arrangement, the spray on the, top the piece of is this just matrix. Great. Is the the, the crystals are so sharp, and the the display is fantastic. Surprisingly, I got this uh, gold uh, from Papua New Guinea, yeah, um, from an old collection. And from New I think Guinea? It's New Guinea. Okay. It's a very old find. Yeah. The guy told me he was in Papua New Guinea about okay. 30 years ago, and back then he acquired this. So 
there is no new production, as we know, mm -hmm. from Papua New Guinea. And it's not really, really leaves, actually. Yeah. It's, it's real crystal. It's flat crystal, but it's real crystal. This is what I like uh, so much about the piece, because it's really crystallized Can you catch the, the crystals, Brian? And the form is super aesthetic, with like flames coming mm -hmm. up. Uh, as, as usual, you have some very nice things to show us. Yeah. I so try my best. See you what, in, uh, in Munich now? Of course. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> see you. Thank you. Well, Brian, I am now with Jean-Michel Laverrière. Jean-Michel is one of my best friends in the business. I know him for about 40 years. He is one of the oldest uh, French dealers. And uh, Jean-Michel has been doing the saint marie aux show since when? 71. Wow. <laughs> 71. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> and uh, and Jean-Michel uh, has been the, the manager of the Lyon show for uh, many years. How oh, many yeah. years? 35 years. And your father before you? Yeah, 17. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Jean-Michel uh, knew my, uh, my father in the late 70s. He met him uh, one time in uh, South Africa. In South Africa. Yes. And he told me that he has a special piece to show us. Yes. Yeah. So I let's have you. a look. <laughs> okay. Now I am Dave Wilbur. Holy cow! <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> no, really, it's a fantastic piece. It's a, it's a rhodochrosite. On, uh, on manganese from the from the Calari from enshrining and uh, Jean-Michel has has been traveling to to South Africa in the late 70s 79 yeah and uh, tell us a little story about this piece when did you get this piece yeah I was uh, in Namibia in the South Africa in 79 in uh, Kalahari and uh, I was with, uh, mineral, uh, with money to buy minerals, a lot of rhodochrosites. And when I was in, uh, in uh, Schwanning Mine, I saw his father, Christian Gobain, who was a fantastic guy. And instead of having a competition, we decided to make a business together. It was a very, very funny, funny story. So you bought this piece in the 70s, yeah. and then you, you got it back? Yes. From the collector yeah. just a few weeks ago. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is the kind of specimen for what we are running all year long. Yes. Because uh, this rhodochrosite is what made the Kalahari so famous uh, when they found uh, this pocket of uh, deep red rhodochrosite. And uh, when Jean Michel told me that he had the uh, a special specimen to show us, and that he, that he showed me the piece. I told him we have definitely to to make a, one of the interview with you because this piece is really a special one, especially with your father. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you, Jean Michel, for showing us this piece. A and pleasure. Uh, it's I a hope, pleasure. I really hope you will have a great show. Thank you. As usual. Yo. Yeah. Every year. <laughs> thank you. We are still in the theater at your entrance, and now we are with uh, Rudolf Watzel. Hello, Christoph. Nice How to see you. How are you? How are you ready? Good to you. see you again. Yeah. One more year in Saint Mario Min. Yeah, one <laughs> another year. <Okay. laughs> it's always a pleasure being yeah. here. Uh -huh. So I was uh, I was looking at your case, and I noticed that you have some uh, new chalcedony from Indonesia. Yeah, there have been a new find recently okay. in the beginning of 2016, this spring, uh -huh. and I got. A few of the very best pieces okay. from there. Can we have a, a look at the, yeah, at the big one on the back? Of you're welcome. That, that piece was the best with, with Matrix I got. I had one similar piece without Matrix, which mm -hmm. was really good too. But this is the only one with the Matrix. And you see the balls, they're really nice with yeah, purple it's color. Yeah, chat <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and they have really special yeah, luster, yeah. what I like, yeah. The, the typically botryoidal kind of crystallization mm. that we can find with the chalcedony, but from Indonesia, yeah. it's really a great, great piece. Yeah, it looks really good to have yeah. all these ball shaped crystals stacked together mm -hmm. to a beautiful, very three dimensional groups. Yeah. Was it, was it really a, a big pocket? 
There were how I many was, PCs? I, I was told there was pretty much much in the pocket, but almost all was not like not crystallized. It was only calcedony or mm -hmm. like uh, well, not so many. And this is one of the very very no. finest. It's the, yeah, it's the first yeah. booth where I see this calcedony yeah. here in San Pario. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did not yeah. see anyone I, in some of the booths. I, yeah. I talked to some collectors. Nobody has seen no. these before at all. Yeah. Or most people do not know them at all. No, so really good piece. Pretty new on the market. Yeah. yeah. That's from recent finding, uh -huh. but from the classic locale there. Yeah, usually yeah. it's uh, it's Federico Pezzotta. The yeah, I got these from, from Milano. I got, I, I got four pieces. Ah, okay. And they are from a find. He told me in the in the last years, okay. maybe one or two years okay. back. He's still working and preparing yeah. everything, cleaning, yeah, yeah. trimming. Yeah, Federico is doing really a great job in uh, Elba. Yeah. Almost every year, he's uh, yeah. he's supplying some yeah. new pieces from this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pleasure to see, to see coming more pieces like this to the market. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have great luster and with the small, I believe it's with quartz in between, yeah. small quartz crystals. Yeah. They're really good and mm -hmm. that was a major find. I, yeah. I mean, I've seen some really other good pieces in, his, the piece? in, in, in Milano. And then, uh, Rudy, I saw in that case... Mm. <laughs> uh, a red light yeah. coming from the shell. <laughs> I got one <laughs> other rock from a classic locale just recently. Not, not big, but can, can be seen from far. <laughs> yeah, you can see from far the quality is marvelous. It's, yeah. yeah. This and, piece and is shining really rubble. good. Yeah. I mean, you know, usually you have, you have the clusters, but, but not on the matrix. You, you hear, you, you see. You can see the manganese on the you back. You also have yeah. the manganese matrix. But the, the, the color? It, yeah, the color is it very just the, on this. the the best yeah. blood red color yeah. and the I can show and you look at the at the transparency yeah, the, the crystals that. are razor sharp. Yeah. It's, and, and it's, what is it's really the very good. best color yeah. for the road. But it's not only the color. I've seen the color. You know the color. The color is really good. But I've seen the color on others. But the luster. This is the combination with color and yeah. luster. To have the, this mirror-like luster, that when is you have, really When you have rare. that luster and yes. that color, mm -hmm. you have just the perfect match for the Rodo from Enshwining. Yes, that's perfect, yeah. You told me that you had something yeah, maybe I've, special. I got one really special piece <laughs> there. Tell us the situation yeah. about the Gotar. They just finished the new tunnel, no? In the, in yeah, the, they, the, they, the railway well, tunnel. Well, when I've been in Switzerland, uh, it was about two weeks ago, they opened the new rail yes. tunnel, the yes. famous Meat. Mm -mm. and, and the new Gwendol is out of this, of this tunnel. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at that. And typically clear crystal from tunnel finds because absolutely many yeah. many quartz they found inside the tunnels yeah. are white or water clear uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, crystals. But you, you know, even for the tunnel, this is unusual high quality. Mm -hmm. Usually, it is they are completely white, but not as glassy as this, and then they look a little dead. So not all have this brilliance and and the the, the high luster, and but that what makes that piece really good. You see, it's pretty thick it's also. Impressive. Like maybe it's almost two and a half to three centimeters thick. Yeah. And you have all the perfect tips all here, the tips no are perfect, damage at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah, what we call Gwindle, of course, it's, it means the twisted the twist, quartz. Yeah. And as it you is can, so long, you can long, see the twist. You, you can see a very yeah. good twist. And that you, one is especially very elongated. Yeah, it's about 16 though. centimeters tall. And you know, the, the, the taller they are, the, the more twist they show. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the piece is absolutely perfect. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for coming by. You're always welcome. Always uh, my pleasure to come yeah. here. So have a good show. You too. And uh, see you in Munich. See you in Munich. <laughs> and I wish you fun at the show. <laughs> so we're now, now inside the, the theater. And I wanted to, to, to speak about Adrien Begon. He is, uh, he is a young uh, Hi, scholar, Christophe. a French cristallier. So Adrien is uh, sharing the booth with uh, Alain, Alain Marteau. Marteau. He has one case. And uh, when I met him this morning, he told me that he has a very special piece to show us. So Adrien, yep. what do you have in your box? So this is a quartz from Lagadette's mine. Okay. It's come from the famous discovery of 1990. It's yeah, called the, the Grand Puy. The Grand Puy, yes. Yes, and I think it's a good thing. It's, uh, 
Okay, we have now, this morning we did the video about uh, VZ, and I told you that there is two famous locations in France for the, for the quartz in Oisan. You have the VZ, and that one is from La Gardette. Uh, it's really a superb example of what can be the best quality in La Gardette. You can see that it can easily compete with the, the Arkansas quartz, and we are proud to think that it can be even better. <laughs> How did you get this piece? Is it, uh, is it a new piece, this one? No, it's an old one from okay. uh, a old miner in Lamur. Okay. It was in the collection of his son, and I bought it in four years ago. Okay. And, now and, and that one, so you told me that one come from the 1990 pocket. I did not understand. Yep. Yes, it comes from this pocket. Yep. And Adrien is also... Uh, a straller in uh, in summer Chamonix. is used to to climb in the in the Mont Blanc. Yeah, Chamonix Mont Blanc. Okay, yeah. how will be the season? Do you know if it can be a great so bad, season? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have many many snow. So you mean what? There is very few chance that this year, this summer, the this summer, the yeah. guys in okay. the valley are able to, to the climb. End of uh, of this summer, maybe September. Yeah, but yeah. it should it might be a short season yeah, this sure. year. So Adrien, thank you, Christophe. Merci. Merci. Thank you very much. Thank you, I Ryan. Wish you, I wish you good luck for the show. Yeah. And thank you for showing one piece uh, of your My collection. Pleasure. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. I was about to do the interview of Michel Cabrol, and coming to the booth, look at the great surprise I had. Marshal Sussman and Aaron. Welcome in Saint Mario Min. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm used to see you for many years in the in this French show, and uh, it's always a pleasure. Can you tell us why you are coming to saint marie aux mines Is there a special atmosphere, a special feeling in the, in the show? No question about it. saint marie has wonderful minerals, and you're always looking for the new finds, but the countryside is absolutely beautiful. The food <laughs> is beautiful, the wine, is beautiful and you see all of your friends here it, yeah. it's just a vacation it's a vacation it's, fair atmosphere it's kind of a holidays yeah, absolutely and you find Sumeb stuff no around Sumeb you find everything and the beauty is is it's like you take the Tucson show and you put it all into this beautiful French countryside that has a classic feel to it and the scale of high-end minerals to the wholesale minerals and everything in between, you never know what you're going to find. Is it yeah, true? that's true. That's so true because you have, you have people from everywhere, but you have a lot of European dealers as well. And we know that in the European collections, there were a lot of Sumed minerals too. Absolutely. And the, com the collections are coming back to the market now because there is yes. some yes, <laughs> <laughs> because there is some some new collectors coming and the, and the the whole business is increasing because of the rarities of the species and luckily we can find some old collection and some old some old sumep stuff because of that too. So absolutely, th thank you for coming. I hope the the hunting will be great always and uh, have a good show. Thank you, thank you, for thank you, for thank you. Cheers. I am now with uh, Claudette Cabrol and Michel. Bonjour, Claudette. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, Michel. Hi. <laughs> nice How are you? you? <laughs> nice to see you this morning. She's a little shy. <laughs> 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 so, so Michel and, and Claudette uh, are uh, famous French dealers. Uh, most of the of the people in Tucson know them because they are at the main show as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michel is very well known in France also because he always supplies and brought to the market some amazing uh, fluoride from Le Burque in Tarn. And uh, Michel, I saw Michel uh, earlier today and he told me that he had, uh, you have yes, two, yes. two nice pieces yes. to show us. Fortunately. Uh, yeah, yeah, because... Uh, because the Burke mine is closed it's, for many yes. years now, no? From uh, 20 years now, okay. and uh, the miners have no more collection. Uh -huh. And I, uh, I found 
very shortly mm -hmm. uh, two nice pieces from Le Burg, from uh, old collections. Okay, from, uh, from the miners directly, you know, you have a very good connection with the miners yes, from yes, Le Burg, yes. and uh, you, you, most of your stuff you get it, you get it yes. from the miners. Now they are old people and sometimes they, they, they sold the yeah. piece. So it's a good time for you to, yes. to find some good <laughs> yes. So show us what, yes, I, what you have. I can show you one. One very special for the color, for the color, and it is a perfect piece, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no broken, and uh, many times uh, the burk, uh, the the fluid of the burk, uh, were broken because it was an industrial mine and mm -hmm. and. Um, the, the mine collapsed yes. when they, when yes, they and blast. Yes, many pockets were collapsed naturally, uh -huh. or others were uh, blast. Yes, and yes. Uh, the miners have no time to to collect uh, safely the, the mm -hmm. specimen, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes they were broken. That one, yeah, it's in very good condition. Yes. There is only tiny things around, and yes, yes, the it's the main problem with the fluoride from the burp. It's that because of the, the pocket collapse or just because uh, the mining process and the blasting mm -hmm. damage the pieces, it's really hard to find perfect pieces. Oh, yes. On that yes, one, yes, yes. that one, the color is more dark. It's from the Burke as well, yes, this one? Yes. yes. And she has a phantom, a yellow phantom inside. And the, that I like is the, the suite of mm -hmm. crystals in mm -hmm. the same line. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the luster is exceptional on yes, that one. Yes, super sharp, super bright. Mm -hmm. It was a, a small pocket. Uh -huh. I saw some other piece like this. I have one in my collection. Okay, I have and to come to visit your collection. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> and um, I, fortunately, I, I, I found uh, that piece. Yeah, uh, yeah. With that Do one. you know how many Recently. pieces came from this special uh, find? No, no, it is not easy. Because uh, me, it's the first time I see a burk of that color. No, so it must uh, not it, be many pieces. It was not a, a big pocket. Uh -huh. And uh, but I saw some pieces. Okay. Now the yeah the color the color is really great. Yes, yes. And if we it compare, is, it is very different. You can see that if you are on the the color are totally yes, different. Yes. And here you can see the phantom inside. Mm, mm, mm. That is blue dark and uh, yeah. there is a, a few of yellow greenish. inside. Thank you, Michel. Always bye, a pleasure, bye, a bye, pleasure to see you. And uh, I heard that there is some more stuff to see, Brian, so let's go. Hello, Alain. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. My pleasure to see you again inside yes. the theater. Thank you. So you told me that uh, you just got a new collection? Yes, in partnership with uh, Gilles Ranger from Multiax. Okay. Uh, we bought a giant collection in the south of France, in Toulouse, an old a retired architect. How many pieces? Uh, about 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> it, has, it, has, it has been long days to pack everything, I guess. Uh, a full truck. <laughs> 16 pallets. <laughs> and uh, some of the species in this case come from this collection. Yeah. It was mainly old classic stone. No? Some, yeah. The guy has been collecting for what you told me since what, the late 70s? Um, early 70s. Yeah. And uh, till uh, five years ago. Okay, okay. Can you show me this citrine quartz from Brazil, please? This is a, a real citrine from Pegmatite from Minas Gerais. I have no other ID in Brazil from exactly mm -hmm. where it is. You can see some interesting extra faces with some etching and a nice color. Kind yeah, of very nice piece. yellow. Yeah. And yeah, complete it, floater. Yeah, it's a floater. What what is it here? Is it albite? Albite, yeah. You know those are very difficult to get because most of them are, are cut. Yeah. Or yeah. carved or mm -hmm. and then I see one uh, appetite. appetite. It's it's from Brazil too, no? Yes. That one. From I think this is a Sapo area. Yeah. 
and what is interesting on that appetite, you have three stages of uh, growing uh, of the crystals. Yeah, yeah, as I can see, yeah. So the first stage, uh, very pale color, kind of gray greenish, with extra faces everywhere, mm -hmm. hexagonal, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, then a second stage of light green yeah. in between, and a third stage internal of very deep, deep green. And uh, the architecture uh, is more or less complicated and very, very interesting in terms of crystallography. I think this is a very good specimen for a museum because uh, it's easy to have. Uh, you have a story to tell. You have a story the, to tell to the, the visitors. Absolutely, story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it displays very well, also mm. very easy. It's not from the new find, this one. Huh? No, it's uh, from the very early nineties, I think. Um, or not late even 80s. sure. I think it's from the eighties. Maybe one. from it the eighties. It was a famous pocket in the eighties. It's a single, very big crystal. A huge, huge crystal. Yeah. Can With a, just a little uh, piece of mother rock here. Look. Very complicated uh, shape Look of the, at the mi mirror faces. Yeah, Enshwining has produced some of the very best hematite in the world. Yeah. And, and this one is a very fine example of yeah. what were the best ones. Yeah. Also from that collection, an old timer from Kavnik, a very, very fine twin of uh, yeah, it's uh, a a twin tetrahedrite. Actually, yeah? Yes. Super fine on uh, almost uh, milky uh, rhodochrosite. Yeah, it's also uh, a good example of uh, crystallography. This was more or less a kind of way uh, to collect of that guy. Mm -hmm. And the the, the collector was. Uh was uh, really, really collecting stuff from Morocco. If I remember, yeah. he had Anglesite, he had yes. Zerosite, Azurite, yes. and yeah. uh, he was very active when Yeah, the... because he, he went many times uh, yeah. directly in the source uh, yeah. in the very early 80s in Twisit. Yeah, and there were a lot of pieces from Twisit in that collection. Yeah. Very fine Zerosite. Yeah, with the rainbow effect on some yeah, uh, yeah. on some uh, faces. And let me show you something brand new, hidden because just arrived this okay. morning. Okay. Not even clean. Okay. I love boxes. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Galena. Dalnegors. No? Dalnegors. Spinello twin. A few sphalerite and calcoparite. Pyrotite, I guess. Pyrotite, absolutely. Maybe a, a coating of little siderite on the back. Mm -hmm. And just can arrive the with, with the dust of, of, of the mine. Yeah. You can see that it comes straight from the mine. Absolutely. And uh, after cleaning, I think it will be really... Yeah. Uh, Major piece too uh, because the I like the two yeah the two crystals like that. It's what is good in Saint Marie. It's that you you have access to many people from the source, and uh, in Saint Marie Omin you have all the nationalities coming, and you can if you if you are running everywhere at the show at the very beginning, you have very. You have really some opportunities yeah. to catch some good things. Absolutely. And uh, it's very exciting. The first days in Saint Marie Omin, we always find something. Mm. Always. And now I guess that you're going to show the special exhibit to, yeah. to Brian because you are in charge uh, of it. And uh, this year it's uh, wine uh, and stones. Wine and stone origins wine and stone, so you will be what is behind that strange title. Okay, so congratulations. Thank you.
Have a good show. Thank and, you. Uh, and see you at the, at at the, the special the, exhibit. Okay. See good you. luck. Thank you. So Brian, now we are in the uh, prestige exhibition uh, room. This year the theme is uh, origin, wine and stones. Um, why origin? Because you know, um, when you first open a bottle of wine, you see the color. So we will speak about the colors of wine and the colors of stone. And also, you know, after when you taste the, the wine, the origin um, uh, is related to, to the wine growing area, terroir, as we say in French. Uh, terroir comes from earth, terre. Um, and so we will, uh, in the second part of the exhibition, we will see uh, some uh, place, some wine yards related to mineralogical uh, area or uh, mining district. In the first part of the exhibition, we have uh, four uh, showcases um, uh, which try to explain to people uh, what are the origins of the colors of minerals. This is a very, very difficult subject. Uh, so we choose also some very fine examples of minerals coming from different museums. Um, and uh, so there is plenty of explanation about the uh, origin of the, of the colors of the minerals, which are related to physics or chemistry. But we choose some very fine examples. As you can see, there's an, a red cloud, vulfenite, enters in 1920 and, uh, uh, in the collection of Colonel Vézigny and then went to School of Mines. So this, that means this is certainly from the famous head over pocket. There's a chance. We have also examples of uh, boleite and pseudo-boleite still from the Paris School of Mines, Min Paris Tech collection. You can see a big Brazilianite from the 50, 1950 di discovery. And a very, very big uh, hematite from the 1975 uh, discovery in Brazil. And, uh, and plenty of other beauties, uh, just to explain, uh, to have some good examples, uh, to try to explain the origins of colors of minerals. Here we have, uh, we have uh, the famous uh, peridot crystals from uh, Ile Saint-Jean, Saint-Jean Island uh, in uh, Egypt a very famous uh, specimen from the School of Mine of Paris. Uh, of course, now there is a uh, Mogok and uh, Pakistanis uh, uh, crystals, but that one is still extremely good. And uh, we have some very fine uh, blue fluorite right from France or some old uh, topaz from Murzinska in uh, former Russia. Here we have uh, some uh, curious uh, example of uh, uh, artifacts. Uh, these uh, uh, glass are melted during the eruption of uh, Mont Montagne Pelé in 1902 and uh, bring back, uh, brought back to France by uh, Alfred Lacroix, the French uh, professor of mineralogy from the National Museum at that time. We have a vitrine about Bacchus, Bacchus the god of wine. Um, and you know that the, the stone of Bacchus is the amethyst in the mythology and uh, it's supposed to protect from uh, uh, when, when you, drink, you drink too much uh, wine. Up to you, make up your mind, try but be reasonable please. Here we, ha we made a comparison um, between the colors of uh, wine, rosé, blanc and red, uh, and stones, or cu even cut stones. Uh, and as you can see, there is some quite interesting uh, matching of colors, and other you can discover that some minerals like rhodochrosite, for, some rhodochrosite for instance, uh, looks pink, but finally no pink matching with uh, any uh, rosé wine. In the red wine vitrine we have a comparison of uh, a very old specimen coming directly from Sainte-Marie-aux-Mines. This is a Proustite, 
uh, found in the 18th century downtown in Saint Mario Mino. And you can see it, match, uh, it matches quite well with some red wines. For the white wines, uh, the comparison of color is much more e easier, um, especially with some yellow calcites, some yellow fluorites, amber, uh, orthoclase, and even some very great rarities uh, like that matlockite from uh, England. Here some fine uh, citrines cut in the, 19, in the end of the 19th century in Australia. No more precision, but uh, this series uh, belongs to the, National, uh, the School of Mine of Paris. Um, Brian, the second part of the exhibition is, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, related to the terroir, so that means uh, uh, the place where the wine grow. And um, so because you know we have by hazard some mines almost beneath uh, wine yards and that's the funny part I want to show. Here for, for instance we have Cabrière. Cabrière is in the south of France in Aero department. As you can see on the picture there is some uh, dumps from the mine and some wine yards just beneath. And in Cabrières, there is some of the oldest copper mine in the world and in Europe. Uh, with those tools, prehistorical pre tools, which are certainly 7,000 years old. They look for copper at the beginning, from the early Chalcolithic period. Uh, to the, the end of the 19th century and then it became some barite mine and now it's a, an archaeological reserve and a, a wine producer uh, territory. The famous mine of uh, Chessy in France, well known for cuprite, azurite and so on, uh, is right in the middle of wine yards uh, from Beaujolais this is not the best Beaujolais, but it's a great big producer. Um, and it's always a pleasure to, to show the old Azurite from uh, every museum, because every museum in the world has at least one drawer of uh, the Azurite Cuprite from Chessy. And as you can see, there is a very great Cuprite from the School of Mine of Paris. But also some less known uh, Cuprian Smithsonite, which were very famous uh, at their time. Now there is some better place in the world, but they, they are still quite interesting. Another example uh, in, uh, in the Beaujolais area, uh, Romanesh Torrens, which is a very great place for, uh, for wine, uh, known for Moulin, uh, Moulin Avant. And uh, Romanesh Torrens uh, has also a manganese mine working from the beginning of the 19th century till the beginning of 20th century, directly under the wine yards and the village. And this is a type locality for uh, Romaneshite, an uh, hydroxide of uh, manganese, and also well known for uh, Arsenio Siderite, for, supposed to be the world's best uh, local locality. Uh, Spain is also a great producer of wine with uh, some great uh, cru. And uh, La Riora area at the foot of the Pyrenees mountains um, is also, uh, also well known for uh, wines like the Vino, Vino Tinto. And uh, in that area there is a famous mine, La Mina Victoria. Uh, well known for the pristine cubes of uh, pyrite and with the cortesy of uh, Piritas de Navarun uh, LDA we have some very fine example and some wine, some pictures, some explanation. I like the, especially the very flat crystal, elongated yeah. cube, killer, killer. Um, another example with wines from Italy, the famous Lacrima Christi, uh, the tears of, uh, of God. 
and uh, which uh, grow in the foot hill of the Vesuvius uh, volcano near uh, Naples. Vesuvius volcano is a famous locality for minerals. Uh, there is more than 250 species uh, recorded there. Um, and this is a type locality of 68 uh, mineral species. Uh, that means it's a very, very important place for mineralogical science. Uh, and this begins in the 19th century. Uh, it was one of the great places at that time in the, in the world for very rare species. These are not very big crystals, but some are very good shape um, and some really rare minerals. So we are now in the streets of St. Mariomin because you, you must realize that St. Mariomin is not only the theater. You, it's what I like really, St. Mariomin. It's a huge mineral fair and you can go in the streets and then visit the, the dealers from, uh, from all around the world. You go from tents to tents and uh, it's what makes St. Mariomin so different. It's, you, you're gonna see. Let's go inside. I heard that Zeb has something to show us. Zeb is a very well, uh, well known uh, dealer from Afghanistan. So let's go inside. Come with me, Brian. Hello, oh. Zeb. How are you? Ah, oh, fine. Thank <laughs> you, my friend. Uh, I, I heard yes, that I maybe day, yes. you have something special to show uh, us. Yes, I Everybody. have. Yeah, I have always something. Yes. Yeah, Everybody yeah. knows Zeb. Zeb is a very yeah. famous uh, Afghani dealer coming to St. Mariomin. You are at the in Suites, no? In yes, St. Mariomin. Yes, yes. Now they call it the uh, Tucson uh, City Tucson. Center. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are specialized in uh, minerals from yes. Afghanistan and Pakistan. Right, yes, yes. So you are really the source and you come to St. Mariomin right. every year. Yes. And as usual, I'm sure you have something to show us because yes, of course, at that, every yes, show there is something yeah, special yeah. with Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Yes, I, <laughs> I try to uh, my best to bring some new minerals always. Yeah, so because let's, everybody let's want to ha let's have a look. To have some, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, this yes, is the, this is the new uh, new mine in uh, in uh, Nagar. You mean uh, it's uh, it's they they worked on a, on a new cleft in uh, right yes okay. yeah this is just as a uh, last uh, summer time yeah okay let's find out this is the only uh, the new uh -huh. and uh, we'll see this is a new uh, it's a, normally before the uh, as you know the fluoride coming the pink fluoride with muscovite and yes so, but yes this is totally yes, different yes yes uh, it's 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 different than the the nagar fluoride we are used to find usually on yeah. muscovite right and, yes uh, yeah yeah and yeah. this one came from last summer yes okay this is the last mining time because in uh, nagar as you know they are just uh, yes Two three months yeah. mining, yeah. yeah, and this is from the last uh, time, yeah, the last yeah. Uh, recently they found it, yeah. Very nice yeah. piece. Yeah. So it was a, it was a huge pocket or only few just, pieces. Uh, just about uh, 50, 60 pieces all okay. together. Okay. But this is what the nice pieces, and this is uh, also they have some, yeah. You can see it's, yes. a, it's yeah. a complete floater around. Yes. Yeah. Seems to me that there is a cast here, maybe. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. The fluoride replacing yeah. like the quartz, and there were uh, no association. I mean, uh, um, like uh, like appetite or so. Uh, right, right now we found just like this okay. with this uh, with some with the with the quartz too. Yeah, uh -huh. it's a big size, just but little. But this, yeah. right now, this we uh, we hope can come out yes, some, with yeah. some other. Uh, but Will it be. has been a, a long time that we didn't see any good stuff like yeah, this one yeah, from Nagar because yeah. in the past t yeah. 10 years ago, 8 years ago, there was some stuff from Nagar coming every year and in yes. quantities and, yeah. and uh, uh, combinations. Yes. It has been a long time, so it's yeah. a real pleasure to see yeah. again something yeah. really good Thanks from, uh, yes, so no from Nagar happened. because yeah, so Nagar there. is one of the most famous uh, yeah. location in, uh, in right. Pakistan. Yes, right. It's, uh, and they produce so yeah. many good things. Yeah. Thank you, Zem. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Okay, and here we have from the I have no doubt this is Lagman, no? Yes, it is uh, Lagman. It's the 
the the, the what what can be the the best tourmaline in uh, in uh, yeah. Afghanistan you have paprok yes. and then you have lagman, lagman. for the indicolite yeah. yeah. and that one is yeah. a very fine example it's the yeah. typical color from uh, from lagman the, uh, the the strong real good color yeah uh, there was a pocket about seven eight years ago on quartz yes and same to to see again some very good lagman pieces it's hard to find uh, it is really good. hard to yeah. find a good uh, stuff and especially indigo light is very hard to get in uh, yeah. indigo light it has uh, an uh, excellent yeah. transparency yes. very nice termination yes. in excellent yeah. condition yes, this is, yeah. and and there were only loose crystal because it's doubly terminated as you can see yes there were no matrix pieces no, on the, quartz or so uh, there have some uh, so a little uh, okay. more piece will show you yeah this is also found some uh, some uh, is also have a ah yes have, yes yeah, yes with the tiny in the back side is a morganite but oh. is a uh, hope to have this morganite in the front. It will Inshallah be. next time. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a really. <laughs> but we hope you never know. Uh, Maybe yes, the next yes. pocket we can get together yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. You can see. Yeah. This is yeah. very cute piece. Yeah. With a, the, the smaller one yeah. you see inside the quartz. In the, yeah. In the top is a little green. This make them so. Mm. Yeah. The Jimmy, yeah. Yeah. So you will be back in uh, in Pakistan this summer yes, to check yes, the new production. Yes, for preparing for the Denver. Yes. Uh, yes. So the next. Uh, in uh, in Paprok in Lagman usually when yeah. do they work? From July to September. July to September. Sometime as also when there is uh, not too hard winter in uh, October they are, but mostly the the work in this yes, uh, in yes, this, like this in day. Yes. Like in the, in the European yes. in the European yes. Alps is the yes. same. They yes. start to work yes. uh, end of July up to September. So right, they have to yeah. Work. Yeah. yeah. So Zeb, thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. Thank I you, wish you, I wish you uh, uh, a good show. Thank you so and much. And good luck yeah. for the new thank production you. and the, the season thank coming. And thank I you. hope to see some great stuff in Denver and in yes. Munich. I hope. I think yes. I will as well. I hope so. I, sh I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank friend. you again, Zeb. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, Jürgen. Christoph, good to you? see you. Hello. Good to see you too. So we are today with uh, Jürgen, who, as usual, has a very, very nice display. But this time he, he told me that he had some few special things to show us. And I love when there is boxes waiting for us. So Jürgen, yeah. show us Let's what are the special of the day, please. Let's start here. Yeah. You know, I like small, cute pieces. I think that's a very, very aesthetic one. Uh, super from cute. South Africa. South African. Yeah, famous uh, location. Right from uh, Orange River area. Yeah. It's near Orange River. Yeah. Uh, near a small town called yeah. Rimpasmark. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it a new piece? It's or? a recent piece. Yeah, find, because yes, yes. there were. Uh, a huge pocket years ago, you got some, I yeah, got you some, got and then the... Big space and yeah, big crystals, yeah. but most of the good pockets are gone, so... Yeah, and, and that one has a very special color, very deep, very yeah. deep color. And the, the crystals are not yeah. very big, but very jump. No, gem. no, it's a, yeah. it's a very nice, very nice miniature. I don't have to tell you about no, the location. It's, no, it's the... We, we, we did uh, another video from this pocket, it's the famous uh, Ziegenstock pieces from the Rufi back. I'm not Correct. wrong. Huh? Yeah. It's yeah. the Rufi back pocket, the the famous uh, cleft, who produced so many amazing pieces yeah. in quality yeah. and uh, in species, in yeah. combinations. And you see them in collections all over the world. Yes, mm. yes. And here you have the. The, the, the very nice fluoride just perched on the top of the quartz. Which it's is very rare for Zinkenstock area. Yes. Normally you have them directly on the matrix or in between mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the smokies. Yeah. And here you have it perfectly arranged. Or on the wrong side yeah, of the yeah, matrix yeah, yeah, you know, as well. <laughs> you know, very few pieces yeah. have this aesthetic. Uh, 
if you're good, you can throw a stone from this pocket to this pocket. Okay, it's not okay, right. Just on the other side of the mountain. Okay. It's from the it's from the, the Grand Hog pocket, no? Perfect. It's the Marmota. Yeah, the Marmota, Marmota yes. pocket. Yeah. The this cleft has a very funny story. Uh, and you tell me if I am wrong, but they call it the, the Grand Hog because at the very beginning, the, the Strahlers, the, 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 the guy who found the, 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 the cleft, just found some quartzes yeah. outside yeah. of a hole where was staying a Grand Hog. Correct. And uh, actually, they found it only because the Grand Hog removed some quartz from the cleft. If not, they would try to expand his house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. So it's why they called it the the Grand Hog, yeah. Grand Hog pocket, and uh, this matrix with isolated crystals, with as always crystals in going in all the all, direction. All direction. It's typical from this uh, pocket. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It's what is Grim Grimsel area, yeah, no? Yeah, it's not far from the Grimsel Road where you go to the Obaa Lake, where famous Zinkenstock yeah, is yeah. located. So it's just a couple of hundred meters uh -huh, uh -huh. below the road. Which year was this dis discovery? It was in the 80s. Okay, yeah, 80, 82, but, but 83. But I think no? it's still active from time to time. They work, yeah. and it's a huge system now underground okay. here. It's so not just a small So small we have cleft. been uh, mining there for uh, about, what, 30 years yeah. now? Periodly, you know, yeah. always stop and then start again. Mm -hmm. and, but you, if you see a thousand smokies and you see one plate, you know you know, where, you, know you, know you should know where it comes because from. It's when almost you, the unique place where you can find this yes. kind of That's light correct. smoky quartz with the, the very, very bright, very yeah. bright life inside mm. the crystals. and. Uh, this is this is really a major piece from I think so, uh, yeah. from yeah. the marmota. Marmota. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Jorgen. So thank you very much. Thank I hope you for you coming will have by. A good show. Yeah. Uh, we have the good weather. You brought the summer. There is the the wine, so the show should be great. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Wolfgang. How are you? Hello. Uh, it's good to see you in St. Mary again. Good to see you too. And I must admit it's always a pleasure to, to come to your booth. Thank you. Because, well, there is a problem because I never n exactly know what we could spot or choose because every time you are so active on oh, the market. You. No, that, that's, that's true. You, you are very strong on the market to buy collections, to find old classics. And um, I'm not sure that people really realize how difficult it is to get so many old classics in, in just one booth. So we're going to check the, the cases and uh, you have really so many classic specimens who are hard to find in quantities and in quality. Yeah. So let's have a look at the, the cases. I know already few things that I want to show us. This is a fantastic ice cube fluoride and very contrastful perched on the matrix of crystallized phalloride. It's very, very good, very contrastful. Mm. It's the old style from uh, it came out at the, from the end of the 80s. Very, very good specimen. Yeah, because Dal Negor did not produce anything major the last years or yes. we have seen we have seen quite a few stuff but things of that quality it's really super difficult yes, to find yes 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 uh, this group of of cults of uh, fluoride in that quality with the contrast of the dark sphalerite it's amazing it, it's I, I really love that piece yes like me let's see and it had no inclusions of clay or something like that, mm -hmm. which uh, the new specimens are yes, having. Yes. yes, a very, very good specimen. Mm -hmm. Also, one of the ice cubes, but a green one. Yes. Look at this. Yes, yes. Also, and totally, yes, of yes. course. Clear, with a, with a nice phantom inside. That's typically for the dal green Dalnigorsk. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Yes. This is also a fantastic piece. 
Were they in the same collection? Uh... In the same collection, yes. Okay. We purchased this, for, this uh, collection fortunately a couple of months ago. We had a bigger one a couple of years ago, but this yeah, is... Yeah, but the, the, the crystallization, the crystal shape, look at that, Brian. Yeah, very, very good. Crystals of bismuth in that quality and in that size, it's really exceptional. Yes, especially because they are not clusters. These are single crystals, Separate very sharp crystals, edge, yes. separated, unetched. Yeah, from, uh, from Saxony, of course. From Saxony, yes. Yeah. yes. Look here, okay. look at the color. It's a little green, yellow, mm -mm, mm -mm. yellowish, yeah, yeah, with, green, a little yellowish pink, yes. with a little pink. Yeah. Color on the edges now. Look the Let's color. Look the in, color in change the in the light. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very cool one. This is also a fantastic specimen yeah. with a huge single crystal. And I always say that, but my favorite pieces are this kind of piece when you have isolated crystals on the. Yeah. On the matrix with a contrast, it's really a super piece too. So hold it, yeah. look here, pristine all around, nice phantoms inside, and they are perfectly perched, all crystals, on those um, crystals of Celestine. An amazing piece. Yeah, excellent display as Yes, well. also very contrastful, the crystals are razor sharp, Yeah. high lustrous. And look at this phantom mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is really a very good example of a really good piece from this. Uh, yes. From Ohio. Yeah. You know, you know how hard it's to get a good, uh, how to get a good dioptase from uh, from Tumeb. But here you don't have one, but one, two, three, four, five, six. really six really good specimens yes. of dioptase from Tumeb. Uh, super cool cerocyte as well. Uh, can you show us this one? Great specimen with large yeah. crystals. As I was telling you, when, when you have the contrast, when you have the isolated crystals, yes, my favorite. That one is way too messy, uh, Volgong. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the second one, excellent piece as well. Look at this. It's, it's what I was saying at the beginning, to, to find pieces of that quality. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Very difficult. And difficult. when you, yes. you are able to make such a shelf with all these pieces in that quality, people don't realize the, the work behind the display. Of course, of display. course, yes, of course. The display on that one, on the quartz, it's really, really, really cute. So look at this, it's totally undamaged, ah. the termination is perfect, deep blue with a clear center, perched on a quartz crystal, yes. a very good specimen. It's a very good piece, really. Caribib usually uh, produce some rough, most yes. of the stuff is cut yes. and, uh, and to find specimens you, you have to be really lucky and to be there at the right time because most of the, there is a lot of buyers in Caribib, uh, uh, local guys or even African guys. There is a lot of Senegalese as well who, who travel everywhere in Africa and who buy the, the rough. And to save a, a specimen for, from uh, Caribib, uh, you have to be, to be lucky. Uh, okay. Volgan, can we have a look at this uh, very pretty gold, please? Yes, of course we can. Yeah. These are fantastic sheets. They are consisting by crystallized gold. Mm -hmm. A very nice specimen for the locality, for that yeah. what it is. Amazing, very, from, very old. From Ural. From Russia. Russia. Yeah. Yes, from the Ural Mountains, from um, Beresovsk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very bright. Yes, a very, very good quality. cute piece yes. of jewel. Very, very nice.
and you told me that you have a few pieces who need to go to the lab. Yes. And uh, is it possible to, to have a look? Can you show Of course. I look at this. Yeah. Especially the, the quality is amazing and the color. It uh, has much more blue than red. So this is a this kind of color is very yeah, it's rare. The, it's the strong. It's really the strong Berbest color yes. with a, a leaf of barite. Yeah. Yeah. We can see that it has never been cleaned. Very still some. Yes. Some mud and. Uh, the rust is inside and yeah. also the, the dust. Yeah. Is in the in the fissures. Yeah. After the cleaning, it will be a really good piece. This a really, uh, really good piece. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. Look here. Wow, the, the, the color is just fantastic. Yes, and here, from this side. Look mm -hmm. here. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. An amazing piece. If Karen has also um, will uh, also show you best, yeah. another Berbis, the same quality, same pocket. Same pocket, yes. Yes. Exactly the same pocket. The, the pocket comes from the 80s. Mm -hmm. so. Look here at the back line. The color is. The color is fantastic. It's really the best color you can get from uh, from yeah. Berbis. Yes. Yeah. Very very nice. Yeah. You see also yes yes front light mm -mm. very good thank you very much as usual it's a pleasure have pleasure a good, for me too have a good show Wolfgang and uh, we will see you in the next days with a glass of wine I guess hopefully <laughs> hello Jordi bonjour Chris. how are you how are you it's good it's good to see you again in Saint Marie yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy to see you again because uh, you have been missing the show for how long? Four, or five four years. years. Four, four five years. years. Yeah. yeah. So you are back. You are back in what we call the swimming pool. Yeah. It's a new area. Yes. And uh, and they needed to have somebody to promote the new space. Yeah. And you didn't want to do the show because you have not enough time. Everybody knows that you are very busy with the website, yeah. with the forum. Yeah. And. Uh, and uh, you had no time to manage the two, but in the end, because if St. Marie you mean, yeah. and because they really offered you a fantastic location, yes. you decided to come back. Yes, well, thank you very much. But That's it's true. not only this, it's also that new people managing the show, they are yes. so helpful, they are so That's nice. True. They do everything to help everybody. Yeah. They try so strongly to promote the PC yeah. because they want that the people inside yeah. has good reward and they make deal and they make money that I can say not. So you are right, Jordi, because yes. look, even Brian is here in St. Marie to make the what's hot yeah. in St. Marie. So thank you to the yeah. new management. Do you remember well Saint Marie? Your father was there before everybody comes for the first time. And Saint Marie is always a wonderful oh, show, yes. always a nice place. And it's a place that everybody should come, at least one time. Yeah. Because it's a so enjoyable place that you can miss it. So I suggest to everybody to come here at least one time and enjoy this wonderful show. And when you ask me if I remember, uh -huh. if I tell you that my first Saint Mario Min show was Whoa. in 1978. Before the dinosaurs or after the dinosaurs? No, right after the dinosaurs, okay. but not so far from them. Okay. So 1978, Jesus I God. was 12 year old. I had my little small yeah. table yeah. selling few rocks yeah, from that the... size, that size. <laughs> and you run around among all tables, Sorry. including my table. So I hate you. Yes, and yeah. you came to my table yeah. to, to buy some rocks yes. that I had on yes. my table because yeah. you knew yes. you could do some yeah. really good business yeah. on, on me. Yeah. Yeah, big, yes. big, big mistake, yes. yeah, big mistake. I will <laughs> never forget. <laughs> Let's have a look at your yeah. uh, wonderful Please. display. Come Thank in. you. Correct. This is a superb example of what is a great piece from Morocco and unusual. Let me really? show you closer. Please, please take it from the case. My pleasure. A former cube of fluoride. You can see even the phantoms in the former cube of fluoride <laughs> completely replaced by pink quartz, uh, reddish pinkish quartz. 
and it keeps the form quite well of the former cube of fluorite and even the phantoms inside. And then a new carbonate comes, or maybe a chalcedonia, I don't know, yeah, coating the whole lead by the fluoride, replace it by the quartz. It's complex. Yeah, it looks like the chalcedonia. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, very unusual piece. Very nice piece from Morocco. I see you have something new here too, uh, Jordi. A very nice imimorphite from Iran. Can we have a look too, please? You are familiar with Iran. You know the minerals uh, yes, that yes. come from that country. Yeah, you know that I had uh, and some pieces years ago. Yes, and, uh, yes. Well, and you'll be one of the first with material from this yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. And this is one really large imimorphite, blue, from a abandoned closet mine. But is it a stalactite? It's a stalactite, yeah, it's correct. A stalactite. You can see the hole, yes, yeah. coated by limonite. And you can see Look the size the, and the, the color. The 360 view of the piece. <laughs> don't touch me, don't touch me. No, it's, it's an unusual emimorphite, really, really nice from... Uh, from Iran. Is it a new find, this one? No, uh, this was mined in 2000. Okay. And they uh, still find some. So probably you you had some and probably you will get yeah, some more. Yeah, but not smaller. like that no. one. Yeah, no, not small, like that one. That smaller one is, and paler. Yeah, yeah, that one is really the best one I have seen uh, It's the larger Iran. one yeah. I have never seen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is something really special. Very technical, but very good. Yeah, Inner Mongolia has been a fantastic source the last, what, five, six years? People say that there's no novelties coming to the market, and this is not true. Yes, Take, yes, for example, yes. this mine. Inner Mongolia has been a main source the last, the world's last years. World's best albines in the wall, world's best gentilvites in the wall, world's best danalites in the wall, world's best silvites, world's mm, best... Mm, it's a mm, long mm. list yeah, of yeah. pieces which are the really best uh, ever. So how the people can complain mm. about the market telling that this is not novelty, that's not true. That's yeah. not my feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is something really exciting too. This is from Portugal, from mm -hmm. a quarry who works for Coors, yeah. named uh, Nossa Senhora da Sunsao. Si. This is in Portugal. And this is meta out tonight, not out tonight. Still, if it looks like out tonight, and it is a primary metal tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not metal tonight after out tonight when it loses water, but it is metal tonight former primary. Okay. Same okay. like the malachites from Congo could yeah. be after azurite, yeah. or yeah. could be primary. Yeah. So this is a primary metal tonight. That is that's the reason why it's so shiny and so colorful. Okay. And don't looks old and dirty. Yeah. Because it was formed as metal tonight. Mm -hmm. But it's not only metal tonight. It's also furcali. All analyze it, of course. As you can see, it is up a large smoky course, yeah. coating the corners of the course. Uh, here you have another bigger with a black, uh, probably iron oxides, with the furca light on the top. Mm -hmm. And here you have still another one, same thing, course, furca light and iron oxides. But and they are from uh, recent mining? The yeah, species? those are recent mining, but not from the mine, but, but people who kept local collectors, okay. which are really the, the main force currently to find good things because people now know the places, know the way to, di to, to dig there, and they find fantastic things like those. Two young people from Spain, they decided to go there until find something, and they found this, which it could be considered the world's best. So yeah. it's not too bad for two young people, you know what yeah, I mean? Of course, of course. And this yeah. happens in many countries, in many places, and that is a new bonanza for the mineralogy. Yes. At least yes. that's my feeling. Yeah. No, no, uh, I understand what you mean, and I'm, 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 I agree with you. Okay, let me show you some specials I okay. have aside for you, including okay. one very nice uh, metal tonight and some other things. I okay. follow you. <laughs> and here you have what could be the nicest one I got. You can see the look at richness the, of the color. Look at the color. The crystals. This is like it's fluorescent by, by just sunlight or daylight mm -hmm. because we have not sunlight we have just daylight and it fluoresces yes, so yes. fluorescent that it fluoresces just with daylight so the color is amazing and two young <laughs> people they go there they search for and they found great things yeah, that's the yeah. new age that's the new age and that's why yeah. the people from Illogical Records says that we live in a 
golden age for mineralogy, yes, yes. and I agree. Yes, yes. I disagree with the people who complain yeah, yeah. about the scarce uh, novelties in shows. Let me give you examples. Oh, this is uh, a fantastic fluoride uh, with a great color, the, the, standing up on matrix the of Moscovite. Look, look at this piece. Like it flowers. Is so cute. So that's new coming from a classic mine, one thing. So you mean it's a new Panasquera new fluoride? New, fine, because uh, fluoride was always very rare in Panasquera, yes. but recently they work it up in the upper labels. They found a lot of fluorides, and including those very unusual ones, looking mm -hmm. completely different than any other fluoride, and looking completely different from fluorides from Panasquera. What is it? Is it sphalerite with the... It's a sphalerite, correct, yeah. ferberite. This is a muscovite below and coated by green chloride. Okay. And the fluoride on the top. And there were more pieces or you... you very few, it? very few. Because I didn't Ooh. see any of the pieces. Very around. few, very few. Then it's some novelties in any kind of country. Look there, this is a stalactitic fluoride. It comes from Vietnam. Vietnam was famous by the pegmatites. They gave some fantastic tourmalines, as you know quite well. But now it's some fluoride too. It, it, it reminds me some from Fonsant, who had some stalactite as well. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. We don't know from where in Vietnam yeah. they comes out. We will know it. But from the moment it's just Vietnam. But a new country is coming to the market and is giving mm -hmm. new stuff. Unbelievable green Spanish fluoride because comes out. Europa, no? To the market because yes. Europa is famous by the red material. Yeah. Let me let me take my torch. Okay. Yeah, okay. I will take the torch. Yeah. The torch. Yeah. The the sphalerite from Picos de Europa uh, are very famous, but the the green ones let let back like the the green the green ones like that one are it works extremely hard to get. Looks that. Looks the color. <laughs> So this is a piece that in normal circumstances, the owner of the piece will never salt out. He will keep it by himself and maybe someday when he die, the collection will come to the market and maybe we will see it or maybe not. Mm -hmm. But the market has very high prices, but also it helps to see things that otherwise probably will never see of course, or of course. they will disappear or we will be hidden forever. Yeah. So one good reason for maintain the support to the mineral collecting is uh, don't have afraid of high prices. If mm -hmm. the price is too high, don't buy it. But the high prices helps to the miners go to pick up so nice goals, to recover all classics like this one, to find so nice mm -hmm. vanadinites like this one, and the miners looks for nice fluorides yes. like this one. You are, you are totally right, and it's very important to say that because we must realize that if today we can see so many good pieces, and if year after year we can find some new stuff on the market. Absolutely. It's because there is some collector who are, who are able to pay a high price, Correct. to finance the miners at Correct. the source through the dealers. And if you have not this link that as dealer we can do between the miner and the collector, and if there was no money involved, we won't see so many good specimens on the market. Absolutely. We must realize this. The Absolutely. money is one of the key because it's not just a hobby, it's also a real business. And if we put money in the market, it brings some new stuff to the surface because people go and, uh, and dig for that. It's very important. I believe the word is a synergy. Yes. Without the money, things will not move as they are moving currently. Mm -mm. It's true too that on the bad side, uh, prices could be too expensive for the beginners or from people who are not big budget. But I don't agree that the situation is worse than in the yeah. past. I agree with Mineralogical Record when they say that we live in a golden age. Yes, That's my yeah. feeling. And, and you know, of course, there is some very expensive pieces yeah. But if you take your time, yes. if you open your eyes, yes. if you just hunt around, I can tell you that with a few hundred euros, you can really get some very good stuff. Just take your time, sometimes wait a little, that more stuff is coming, and then you can get a good piece at a good price. Just take your time. Absolutely. But also, if I could give an advice, it's better to buy few good pieces instead of buying a lot of very medium medium quality pieces. Just take your time and, be and slow. select. Yes. Be slow, take your time, make your choice. Don't buy in the first feeling. Mm. Take a second trip, think about, and when you are decided, go ahead and buy it. Yeah. Or just release it. 
and feel happy in both sides. Yeah, you are course, not obligation to watch anything in the shows. <laughs> so if and, you uh, enjoy the rocks and you enjoy Berlinals and you don't buy nothing else, that's not a problem. Exactly, just, just enjoy. enjoy. It. <laughs> yeah, we did well, huh? <laughs> it's okay. You need something else? Uh, just say some extras. And we'll be done. Okay. So. Okay, Jordi. As thank you for your, thank let me, you. Let me help you with this. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> let me put this uh, marble in some place. And thank you for thank your you, visit. And thank you again for coming to to Saint Marie My Mine. And by the way, I want to take the opportunity to say thank you for what you do through your website, thank you very much. through your forum, which is really a fantastic source to get information, thank you very much. Uh, to, to, to see what, what's is, what is going around. And uh, you, it, it's also sometimes funny, you can see the good sometimes. mood or the bad mood of the people, yeah. and there is sometimes yeah. some fights. But yeah. it's life. It's a lesson and, of psychology. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Of the psychology and, of the uh, mineral collectors. And, and sometimes you need a lot of psychology on your yeah. website. And patience. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you again, Jordi. Thank and you. good luck for the show. Good show. Good, good luck in the show, too. Thank you. We just met Jordi Fabre at the entrance of the swimming pool. And this year, the, the, show, the show management decided to make kind of VIP section in the swimming pool. Um, to, to make the promotion of the U European, uh, European climbers, European strahler, we call them Cristalier in France. And they did a, a special exhibit with three cases owned by three French Cristalier who decided to present the, the new find that they did in 2015 because they are used to, to work in summer because of the snow. And um, in the next years, the swimming pool will become more and more the VIP section for the minerals from the Alps. And I'm really happy to present you Sebastian. Sebastian Cayati, nice to meet you. Hi, Christophe. He is one of the strong guys working in the, in the Alps. And, uh, I really wanted to present you Sebastian because he made a, a major discovery last last summer. So Sebastian, can you tell us a little more about the all the species or new finds that you did last summer? No? Yes, last summer, especially in August. Okay. Because last year was a, a pretty amazing year for weather condition. Yes, yes. So we have the opportunity to climb a lot of days, which is not. The, often the, the case. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I found in August um, a quite big pocket, uh -huh. um, two meters uh, pocket. Wow. But you mean an alpine cleft? Of alpine cleft, typical. Two meter. Yes, typical which alpine is, cleft. Which is fantastic. Yes, especially in the Mont Blanc. Yes, yes. But uh, it's it's uh, often the, the case also. Uh, there was a lot of destructions. In the pocket, okay, because of the tectonics, it, it was collapsed, and uh, I think 80% of the pocket was completely destroyed. Yeah. And I found, I was lucky enough to <laughs> find a, a ma an amazing specimen. You mean what? This, this man, masterpiece this, that I can see turning yes, around. Yes, yes. This found double it. grindle. <laughs> it was in the middle of the pocket, and yeah. I, I don't know why, <laughs> but it was intact. <laughs> And uh, there was this little one also, okay. but this one was the major one in the middle of the pocket with no damage, with the, the pure quality. And, and it, okay, it's difficult to find some good grindles. Of course. But on that one, it is not one grindle, but it's two grindles yes, together I was, we have. I was very surprised <laughs> to find this. And, uh, and also it's, it's, it's quite surprising because it's almost water clear. Grindel, yes. white water click Grindel, and it's not so common. We are more used to see smoky, smoky, smoky of course. And uh, that one has an incredible clarity. It has a very light, maybe smoky. I don't know if it's the back, the back of the case who make the reflection, but it seems to have a very light, light uh, smoky. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, very it? light. Yeah. And the most amazing is that I found. Um, I think two weeks uh, before, uh -huh. I found another uh, alpine cleft, okay. uh, uh, 10 meters uh, at the left, yeah. uh, but uh -huh. same altitude, etc. And it was 
pure smoky quartz. Okay. <laughs> and this pocket so was quartz. Yeah. yeah. So the, um, no, it's it was really very surprising. This kind of piece, I'm not sure you will, fi you will find something similar in the next 20 years if you go climbing. I don't think so because uh, um, I'm looking for uh, pieces like this yeah, yeah. since uh, uh, what, 15, 15 years. 15 years, me, yeah. 15 years. Yeah. And then I ever found this. And then it's not the same lo 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 location. And that one is Faz Sud and that one was Taleb. Yes. The, that, this one too, you found them last summer? Yes, I found okay. last summer in July with my uh, friend uh, Christophe Perret. Very, very well known. Very guy. famous Cristalier. And um, the particularity was the association of... It's Adularia, no? Adular. Yeah. Smoky quartz and little uh, fluorites. Yeah. The cherry on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cherry on the cake, exactly. Was and it with, a big pocket, that one? Yes, quite big, but yeah. the same case, I think um, 20 30 percent of destruction, but the, the rest of the pocket was clean. Yeah, yeah, but really, people must realize because if we don't have guys like you climbing, we will never see this species. Of course. And sooner or later, in 1,000 years, in 1 million years, sooner or later, all the species would be destroyed because of the tectonic. So, because of your patience, we are able to see this. So, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Sébastien, you are not only a climber, you make some amazing video. I have seen some of your videos Thank on you the internet. <laughs> you are pretty, you, okay, you are a mo modern climber because you are very active on the, yeah. on the social media. We, we the, try to. Yes, yes. <laughs> but also, you are a writer and uh, Chronique de Cristalier is really a coffee table book that you must have because it's not only photos of specimens, but it's all, all, also stories about Strahler, about climbers, it anecdotes. The story behind the crystals exactly. of the men. Yeah, and it's, it's why this book is really interesting because we can see photos of uh, great specimens, but the stories behind the specimen is even more important because it makes realize to the people how hard it is to exactly. find a specimen. Exactly. And there is also some funny stories and anecdotes and it, it gives a... Uh, it gives kind of memory of what you what you do on and the and I think it's a good yeah. thing also for collectors. Yes, yes of course. To not forget of course. this of kind of story. Okay Sebastian, so this year will be maybe difficult because uh, I, I think heard so. it's still snowing. I think uh, so. This is an El Nino year. Yes. So um not sure that the 2016 uh, year will be good. As anyway, good as the last year, it, I think it's impossible. But <laughs> let's, let's cross the finger. We will see. And, uh, we will see. And I'm sure you, you will have some great days. I will too. do my best. Thank, Thank you, you Sebastian. Christophe. You're welcome. Have a good show. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. OK, Brian. Now I am with the second uh, Strahler, the second Cristalier, with uh, Grégoire de Bodina. Hello, Grégoire. Hi, Christophe. I'm happy to meet you again. Um, really, Grégoire uh, de Bodina is like uh, Sébastien that we met just before. He's one of those uh, very strong, very strong Cristalier. And I'm really, really happy to, to promote the, the work they do because uh, Grégoire is the guy, the gentleman who really made alive again the message mine in his air. Mesage, it's a very old mine from the 19th century. Uh, the beginning of the mine was 1820, if I remember. Yes. But the, and the official concession was 1814 or... 1848, 18, yes. 1848. Yes. And uh, they, the, the purpose of the mining there was for the iron, because Mesage uh, is an iron mine. Uh, and they have been working in Mesage up to 1873, if I remember, yes. 1873. Yes. And then they, they stopped the mining, yeah. and the mine has been uh, forgotten for, for much, more yeah. than one century, for 130 years. Yes. Yes. Early yes. 2000, you started to, yes. to mine again. Yes. And uh, really, Grégoire just made a fantastic job in the mine because. Uh, in the last 10, 12 years, you found really some 
amazing stuff. But when I say amazing stuff, I mean it's not just good stuff. It's stuff that you find in the museums now. Uh, there is the, how you call it, the spider? Uh, 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 what is the name of the Siderite in the Mim Museum? Yeah, spider. The spider. Yeah, the spider. Uh, he really found some world-class Siderite in different colors, in different shapes, yes. associated with quartz, associated with pyrite. Yes, boronite, tetrahydrate, yes. yes. So now he's presenting the, the last find. It's from what, last winter, yes. 2015? Yes, I'm collecting this, uh, this winter. And uh, it's about four months. In the, okay. Uh, yes. Um, there's about uh, four or five pockets. Yeah, it yes. was my question. Yes. Yeah, it's we can yes. see it's different pockets yes. because of yes. the association, the colors. Yes, in October this pocket with uh, siderite, quartz, and calcite. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, like the specimen. Mm -hmm. And then the interstellar. Interstellar is <laughs> other pocket. It's just uh, yes because yeah, the spaceship, <laughs> <laughs> spaceships, <laughs> and uh, this pocket is uh, 12 December. Of, uh, okay. Yes, 12 okay. December. Yeah, so almost the Christmas pocket. Yes. <laughs> there is a Christmas pocket for the Rodo in Sweden, no? <laughs> and uh, some uh, playwright uh, in April. Yeah, in April, it's yes. iridescent. The, the, it color, the color is really, yes, really yes. cool on, the, on and, that uh, this one. this specimen is just uh, one pocket with one specimen. Only one piece? Yes, yes, <laughs> one piece. <laughs> and usually the, the pocket that you find it's small pockets or it's huge pocket? Is it collapsed or is it clean? No, uh, pockets are generally small okay. and clean, okay. very clean. Some specimens are just clean with water. Okay, yeah. but uh, we can see, we can feel that that it was very clean in the pocket. Yes. The, this piece, for example, I, I love this piece. Yes. I love the, the architecture of the piece with the, the tiny quartz on top of each siderite. Uh, and you can see that it was clean inside yes, the pocket, yes. that there was no chemical for cleaning yes. the piece. You, yes. It's a fresh piece. Fresh piece, yeah. yes, yes. And, uh, and by the way, you have some pieces uh, on photo in the, in the book of Sébastien Cayati, you know, in Christ Chronique de Cristallier, yes. there is, a, yes, some, there some, is some pieces from, yes. uh, mm -hmm. from Mesage. Yes. Now you, you do really a good job. Uh, congratulations. Thank you, uh, thank congratulations, you. Grégoire, and, uh, and good luck for the show. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Brian, we are now with uh, Sylvain Desfarges. Hello. Hello, Sylvain, how are you? Fine. He is the third uh, Strahler, the third Cristallier that I wanted to, to present you today because they did the special exhibit. And this case is all the new finds that Sylvain found in 2015, last summer. And uh, as, uh, as Sébastien Cayati and Grégoire de Bodina, he is also a very strong guy uh, who, is, uh, who is climbing and, and who is finding some really major pieces. And I wanted really to promote the, the, the work that he does. Um, Sylvain is specialized in Oisan. Yes. Uh, Oisan means uh, for you Vizy. Vizy, le... Grande Rousse as well. Massif des Grandes Rousses. Euh... Oisan in general. Oisan in general. Oisan, just to, to locate for you, Oisan is near from Grenoble. Yes. Oisan is also a very famous place for the Axinite, wor worldwide Axinite were well found. Uh, and quartz. And quartz as well. And uh, you did also some great discoveries from Le Trou des Chasseurs, yes. uh, with quartz and siderite. Yes. Some of your pieces are also in the Sébastien Cayati book, Chronique de Cristallier. Yes. So I'm really happy today to, to present you, uh, Sylvain. So Sylvain, can you show us a little your uh, last finds uh, from uh, last summer? Last summer, um, I find the smoky quartz with uh, epidote. Okay. It's yeah, that one uh, particularly is really uh, a major piece. Yes. And uh, when was uh, years ago you you found some pieces with uh, with I don't remember its name, but you had one pocket years before, no, uh, of smaller pieces, no, from uh, from Grand Rousse. I am uh, yes, but uh, not nothing significant. No, 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 no. Yeah. just quartz, uh, ba basic, basic quartz. Okay, uh, okay. 
Uh, Brian, if you can make a zoom on that one, you have an exquisite miniature of uh, Lagardette, Mac, Mac de Lagardette, which is the Japanese law twin in English. This piece is really exquisite. It's, uh, it's uh, from 2015, uh, this one as well. It's a new piece or it's an older it's piece? It's an old piece. Uh, I found it in... Um, in uh, ah, yes, I see. 2000, yes. 2012. Yes. Okay. From from Vizil. From Vizil. Okay. Superb. A famous locality in France for, for Japan twin. Yes, yes. Well, in France, there is two main localities for uh, uh, water clear quartz. We have Lagardette yes. and we have Vizil as well, who yes. produce some really major pieces. Yes. And then, uh, Brian, look at that one. He called, uh, um, Sylvain calls the, the piece the, the, the hand, hand, la main. The, the quality, the transparency of the quartz, it's, it, look, it reminds me uh, the quartz from uh, Arkansas when they are at the best quality. Yes. Okay. A mine in Brazil. This is uh, in, uh, in Grande Rousse mm -hmm. with the group, group Ectrogen. Okay, know, um, yeah. With the, and, the, uh, the group Electrogen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the electricity. <laughs> for the electricity, for the, the perf group. perforator. And uh, here I am uh, in a... Uh, in a geo big geode. Yes, a big <laughs> one. I found this, uh, this ghost quartz in uh, Deux Alpes. Okay. I'm, I'm really happy that we have been able to do the interviews of these uh, three uh, Cristallier because they are really the the new generation who is really strong and uh, they in the last 10 years they really they really uh, bring to the market some uh, some worldwide pieces and uh, i'm happy to make the the promotion of this uh, of this cristallier so sylvain thank, thank you very much yes thank you too have a have a good show and yes. i hope that uh, two, 2016 will be a great year for you yes. too and i wish to I, i'm sure I, I cross the finger for you guys i wish to <laughs> thank you very much thank you bye have bye. a good show bye bye hey brian so you found me here in the gym area i'm having some lunch nice specialty of the area it's a tarte flambe uh, specialty of alsace with kind of a pizza dough and then on top of that cream little onions and lots of bacon so and of course the crema that goes with it so i'm gonna have lunch and then we're gonna look at some nice stones inside uh, the jam area does that work for you all right welcome to Sainte marie in the jam area Bonjour Alfred, comment ça va? Bonjour Eloise, ça ouais, va très alors? bien, merci. Et you... toi? Très bien, très bien. So you have a few things to show us, it seems. Oh yes, I do have. Thank you very much All for right. passing by. It's an honor. Um, well, to start with, I'm, as you know, I'm a specialist for Bolivia. Yeah. I do live in Bolivia. And production in Bolivia was very, 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 very little this year. But I did get one quite interesting thing, okay. which is a stanite, which is, uh, it is a rare mineral, but not too rare. Uh, you hardly ever see them in brilliant crystals. Mm -hmm. and, and it seems that you have several pieces of them. What we have, what I have got is a little lot from an area of the mine in Oruro, mm -hmm. where they're never producing actually, because they hardly do find any, any mineral, any ore there. Mm -hmm. And they happened to produce there a little bit to work, and they found these wonderful crystals, which yeah. is arsenopyrite, wonderful lustrous arsenopyrite, a little bit of quartz. And on the and arsenopyrite crystals, nicely. you see wonderful lustrous uh, stunite sitting on it. Can I take it? Sure. Thank please. you. <coughs> and they are so lustrous. When I saw them first, I didn't believe they would be stunites. I had no idea what they were. So I sent them to the laboratory because I was guessing they would be sphalerites, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they turned out as perfect stanites. Yeah, this is a very nice piece. I saw like you have other pieces, but this small, this small one is really nice. Yes, there are two kinds of them. There is this kind, which is massive stanite without any arsenopyrite, wonderfully lustrous. These resemble even more the uh, the sphalerites. Mm -hmm. And then these came out first, actually, and these came out a little bit later, like two weeks later, when they okay. continued working, and uh, there. 
C'est mignon. C'est mignon. C'est très sympa. <rire> Exactement. Yeah, but my favorite is definitely this one. This is more. You have more of it, more messy, but the the crystals on this this one is really, really nice, and the association is really good. So. Absolutely, and it was a very limited find. You, we, I have about 15, maybe 20 of these pieces combined. Nice. Like okay. 10, 10 of these, 10 of these. Okay, that's a perfect. Uh, For Saint Marie, then, good, uh, right on time. It is absolutely. Cool. They just came out before the show. That's great. Uh, you're familiar with the Iranian fluorites from Kamshiri mine, right? Uh, they're quite common, but usually they're really dull. They mm -hmm. don't have luster. They're not showy and beautiful. And I think I was able to get two of the best pieces that ever came out of that mine, which is this is one of them. You get the fluorites lustrous. You get really a nice color who. You have the inside, the blue, you see the blue blues, color inside, yes. and the outer layer is a purple, mm -hmm, a very mm -hmm. good purple. Um, I'm not sure whether the camera is able to catch the luster, I hope so. Mm -hmm. And you have this beautiful association with this little Boitra little calcite, mm -hmm. which I was able to keep on it when That's I was great, cleaning, cleaning the piece. it. Yeah, and on, the, on this one, like you see the blue color as well. Yeah. Just and the they have here. wonderful transparency. If you get a little closer, you can really see through. Mm -hmm. These are jemmy, jemmy, jemmy crystals. This is a very nice piece. It's definitely the, the best I've seen from the, from this locality for sure. I think it will be the best. The, the, the two pieces I got, they compete for, for the best of the mm -hmm. locality. And that's actually nice that you can see the, still the, the blue. Yeah, the I removed, there that was a little part. damage here. Another crystal as well attached. Mm -hmm. So I removed the crystal here uh, to expose the contact mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. These are contact faces. And here you really see nicely the interior of the crystal. So you have both. You see the, you have the luster <coughs> and you get the blue color that they really have. Cool. That's very nice. I like it this way, actually. This is perfect. For such a beautiful lady like you are, you will get a lot of <laughs> posts, you will get a lot of letters written. So there is something you might use for all your letters, but the wind doesn't take them off. <laughs> I it does dance. It does dance. <laughs> I recently made my first trip to Trorolke mine, which is a 5,000 meter peak in far off Bolivia. It's a two days trip only to get there from La Paz, where I live. And it is known for producing, it was known for producing some nice bismuthinite. And probably for 10 years, nobody ever, nobody went there as it's so far off. I managed to get there and they were really friendly at the mine. And the only specimen I got there was this nugget of native bismuth. Wow. So and do, it do you actually like weigh it? Do you know how much it I weighs? I didn't weigh it, but it's probably <laughs> one and a half kilos. Yeah, right. And there might be some bigger ones somewhere around in the world, but it's actually the biggest bismuth nugget I have ever seen uh -uh. in my life. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. That's a fun one. It's definitely fun. Just feel it. I think for two years or two and a half years now, there have been uh, these garnets, these green demantoids coming out of Komsher, uh, of, of, of Iran, of northern right. Iran, Azerbaijan province. Mm -hmm. Um, you, got, you, ha, you got me at garnet already. I love garnet. So. Oh, wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> when it's green, so it's there are some better. around. And you see them like two centimeters, mostly one crystal, two centimeter in matrix, no other crystals around. Yes. Small cabinet sized pieces, even smaller and small cabinets. And there are very few pieces which are really significant in size and very few big crystals. Right. And if they yes. get bigger, they usually get darker. They're mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. So let me show what I think, what I believe is the very best piece. Of yes, the please. Please, please. And it would be oh, this. Oh, wow. Great. You have one oh, my huge, goodness. really green, intense green crystal yes. sitting in the center. There is practically no damage yeah. around. It has been trimmed a bit because mm -hmm. it was a huge boulder. And you have... This big piece in the center is just Big isolated stunning. crystal in the center and then some other big crystals sitting around, just giving it a perfect balance. Yeah. It's perfectly lustrous. The color is stunning. It's the, as good as it gets for the place. Wow. That I love. Definitely my favorite piece, <laughs> but oh, I'm biased, okay. you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you have a very good taste, and if, if something's your favorite piece, that's the proof that it's. Yeah, really that's great. great. That's really good. That's really good. And you know, it's definitely a museum piece, you know. It is absolutely. It also has the size. It's, yep. it's big cabinet size. It's not the small pieces you usually have. Perfect. It's just as. Did you get be. that, Brian? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you. It was. Uh, <laughs> It, it was great to see it at least, you know? Well, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. It's my pleasure. All right, well, thank I you wish you a good show. Bonne continuation. Merci. And uh, I will see you next year, most likely. Merci. À toi aussi. À très bientôt. Et on se voit en Munich. Ouais, ça marche, Munich. Très bien. Ciao, ciao. Au revoir, ciao.
Hello. Hi. So, Matrix Hi. India, that's yes. great. Like, I know that you have some new things to show us. Yes, we And have. it's actually like very flashy. Walking down the street, you can actually see those nice disco balls from very far away. Yes. But I think it's interesting this inter interesting this year because it's a bit different, right? It is. It is. Uh, this is this is a new find of. Uh, the disco balls that we have for this year and uh, it was a very small cavity as compared to the previous years mm -hmm. where there were a couple of hundred specimens but this year we have just about roughly about 10 to 12 nice specimens okay. from the well and uh, it's different because the crystals are larger than uh -huh. the previous years and the color is more intense. Intense. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the termination is a bit is different as the well. Term, the, yes. the first ones were flat and these ones are they, they are they are tapering and then they then they become flat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the first ones like uh, okay you're taking out already my the, <laughs> my favorite piece this is my favorite piece of the entire of your entire display case I love it because just it looks like a, a flower this one and yes, it's perfect yes. all the crystals are perfect it's it's a nice floater for right, sure it's, it is. you know it's different from the big short showy pieces yes uh, but I, I, I love this is my yeah, favorite this, sure. this is uh, this is the unique characteristic of this find is that the previous ones were completely round so mm -hmm. the name disco ball right but uh, these ones are like flowery shaped yes like although rosettes. they do retain uh, the certain features of the disco mm -hmm. ball find which is flat terminated flat. Uh -huh. which was the first time that it came out of India uh, in 2001 mm -hmm. and uh, so this is a nice floater piece altogether. And uh, these were all mined uh, by me and my father, okay. like the previous finds. So. Okay, so when, when did you um, discover this? This was, this was right after uh, Tucson, in the, towards the end of March. Okay. And the whole month of April we were working on this. Yeah, so that's a real novelty in, in, in Sainte Marie, for yes. Sainte Marie, yes, that's perfect, yes, that's yes. great. We were, we were waiting for the show to yeah, bring great, it out. Yeah, great, great. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the biggest the and biggest the, the best piece out of the lot. Mm -hmm. it's, got about, uh, it's got about four uh, specimens on a matrix which is a floater wow, of Wow, look on the back as well, bite. wow. So this actually is, is, is a large floater that, that kind of came out of the cavity. And we were surprised looking at the size of the crystals, we thought it's going to be a very big pocket. Uh -huh. But... Uh, Not that many. Yeah, it was just a few wow. specimens that came out. Wow, that's beautiful. This is a beautiful... I, I didn't see the back earlier, so yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. Look at that. Cool. I'm happy we took it out. Love it. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's, very, very that's, uh, that's, I, it speaks for itself. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I wish you a good show in uh, Sainte Marie. Yes. And I'm uh, pretty sure we're going to see each other in most likely Munich next yeah, time. Yeah, Munich. Okay, cool. <laughs> thank you. Take, take care. Bye bye. At Nicola Silberman's booth here. And again, this year has, uh, Little things to show us. Yeah. I'm looking down right here at this suite yeah. of gemstones. Can you take them out for, for us, please? All right, Nicola. So these are my last babies, uh, whole family. And uh, these are Eliodos from uh, Brazil. I won't say, uh, well, these are, these are coming from Brazil, and I bought them already cut, and I asked to uh, master cutter to reshape them, to make a necklace. All the stones are the same color, same hint, same cut, same polish, which makes this the necklace sweets. something which is spectacular. Very unusual, this is unique. Already, all together, this is something like, uh, yeah, 50 carats, exactly 50, 50 carats. 50 carats of uh, Heridor. Yeah. Match so you got no browns inside, which is difficult to get in uh, mm -hmm. Heridor. Heridor, yeah. And you Put the lights on the stones yeah, just well, here, you know, yeah, like to make the to complete the necklace. Yeah, know? she's a, she's foreigner. I mean, she's not Brazilian and she's African. And uh, this is something unusual. This is an old tourmaline coming from Nigeria. Okay, everybody will say, yeah, I know this is Ooh. coming from Nigeria, but you won't find this hint. Also, this is a, a 10.81 carats tourmaline. I will say lagoon, but lagoon is now something. Yeah. Wow. Okay. This is green, blue, green. Yeah, the but color is beautiful. Yeah. This is something I brought from uh, my last trip in uh, Sri Lanka. Okay. Okay. And uh, well, you know, minerals are something I like too, but I like unusual. And one of my friends yesterday told me, "Well, you like minerals, but 
you like uh, gemstones, but there is something you really like, it's graphic stones. And I said, well, graphic, and I, okay, so I understood that everything that I'm looking for are representative of something you can see in the nature. And I just think, well, I'm sorry about it, I just found God's hand. All right, let me look at it first. Okay, so Let's can turn you around. turn around? I'm going to turn around so Brian can get it. And then what I'm curious about is, because Maybe. this is an unusual shape, that's for sure. Yeah. But what about here? Mm. And it's, it's kind of dense. It is. It uh -huh. is. It's yeah. kind of dense. Okay, it's not Do you Libyan think the mineral glass. people are going to get it? Yeah, it's not, it's not glass from Libya. It's not glass from Libya? Okay, it's not glass from Libya. Okay. Can you see? You know, like oh. I, I see the hexagonal kind okay. of shape here. Oh, okay. And a little bit of striation here. Ah, uh, you know. It might be a corundum. It is. Okay. Definitely. All right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, that's, that's fun. That's Don't a fun stone. Don't miss with <laughs> And generally, when you find corundums, this is more usual. That's okay. the usual shape of corundum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see, we see okay. still the, you know, this hexagonal shape that we found back in the other one and the little striation that maybe um, Brian can catch on camera here. So that's, you know, that's the usual shape for sure. And another little, well, Real nice one here. That's yeah. That's what that's what we expect from a, a great, random, perfect shape, and that's highly unusual. And yeah, I think that people are gonna but love that. Wants. People are gonna love that. Yeah. And uh, did you have one more thing to show us, maybe? Yeah, you yeah. never seen this color. I mean, generally it's more orangey. And this is flame. What I call flame. Okay, aspinel. Okay, this is flame. Mm -hmm. So you got orange and you got red and you got pink so we're in the paparacha family color right mm -hmm. yes so it's very unusual to find it in this shape in this size this, this size is, and this color yeah this is seven carats so with what seven is carats. more unusual is to get the second one which gives you a pair look at that great let me try to move it around first do, 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 you yeah. have, do you see it yeah. in the bottom and left corner here? There's a little, little shine, kind of like little inclusions of, of, of copper that's really typical of sunsets, uh, sunstones from, uh, from Oregon. Oregon. A pair of sunstones from Oregon. That but you know, like, uh, and until I saw actually this, I had no clue of what the stone was, you know, like, and especially, especially two of them, like two of them, like matching color, matching pair. This is great. May I introduce you, uh, uh, well, the new generation. Salut Sacha, ça va bien? Ça va. Alors, tu es le fils de Nicolas? Oui. Ouais, et tu, you're passionate about gemstones as well? No, gemstones, uh, fossils. Fossils more? Oh, God, you're not on the right, in the right area here. So, yes. but, but you know anything about gemstones? Yes, sure. Yes? Do you um, want to present us something today? Yes, or? I would like to present the Star Wars Cross. Uh, the particularity of these stones is uh, the um, Ruchil inclusion. And I, I kind of understood that it was a kind of a specialty of the house, right? Of, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, of the Zilberman family, right? Exactly, this is the Zilberman family. So where do they come from? Um, do you know? Madagascar. Madagascar, yeah. Okay. Okay. Last year, with my parents, we go to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, nice. Yes, yes. and this year, uh, we go to Burma. Burma, Burma, Myanmar, yes, great. Well, have a great uh, trip over there. When are you going, like at the end of the year? Uh, no, uh, in July. Next week. Cool. Next Perfect. Week. Well, great. So have a great tour there then. Thank and you. I will uh, see you maybe in Munich, Toussaint, Sainte Marie. Yeah, we'll, All right, we'll great. Sacha, enchanté d'avoir fait ta connaissance. Nice okay. meeting you. Thank you. Et Merci. I will see you soon, I'm sure. Uh, Thank thanks for sharing the, those beautiful All things with us. Bye. Take Thank care. You. Bye. We are here with Tina Pasha. Hello. Ça va bien? Ouais, merci beaucoup. Ouais. Uh, I'm stopping here because walking past, I saw these pieces of jewelry here. So I just love the shape. It's very unusual shape for this stone. Can you tell us more about the, the, the earrings and the, and the necklace, please? Yes, these uh, are worked with uh, white gold. 
and there are kunzit and tourmalines. Uh, the problem to, to have this is that kunzit cleaves very easily. So we have to be very careful to have these cuts, That's these perfect amazing. cuts. So this is a, a real good work on just, that. It's going to turn to a pair uh, of ear rings and uh, some nice, beautiful kunzites. Yes, kunzites. Kunzites. Do you know where they come from? The kunzites. Uh, I think they come from uh, Pakistan. Pakistan. Yes. Yes. yes that's they it. look like it. Yeah. I just this is just beautiful, and I think the matching with um, the matching with the turmalines on top is just great. And again, the shape, the shape, the, the way the kunzite have been cut, it was it was really impressive to me. I've never seen that well, before. It's so quite quite wonderful. That's it's why I really beautiful. wanted to show yeah. that to uh, to show that to people. We have two colors of pink. Mm -hmm. Yes. Two different. No, it's perfect matching. And so, you know, that's something that uh, mineral people know, like they, you know, kunzites is uh, as well, can crystallize it's very nicely as well, so it's very nice and different to see the, in when they are cut like this, yes. and you can wear well, them. the result is perfect. The result is perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, I could wear that, I can, yeah, no problem. And look at the back, actually, I didn't see that. Did you see that? Yeah. That's very nice. Well, we, we have put some uh, little diamonds on the know? back and, and yeah. uh, on the pendant very, as well. Very, small, tiny ones right. to, to no, improve the quality of the stones. So, well, I'm wishing you a good show. Thank you. And I will see you Thank probably you. next year in okay. South Malay again. Huh? Okay. okay, take bye care. Bye. Have Tomorrow. a good day. Bye. bye. We are here with uh, Stéphane Gruber. We heard about you a lot in the show because you have Everything in your booth is uh, Imperial Topaz. Yes. So tell us more about it. Like, uh, so you're the one actually uh, at the mine, you, like getting the stones out and cutting them and oh, doing okay. the whole process, or what's happening? No, with it's us? my wife's family that okay. is taking care of the mine in Brazil, and it's a unique mine of Imperial Topaz. Okay. Uh, it exists for 300 years. And uh, so it's, it's a top jewelry stone, you know. But we see a lot of uncut stones like that. Mm -hmm. So you have actually not only uncut um, rough stones, but un, um, gemstones as well. Do you mind if we open the, this box first? Can yes. I have a look? And then we can, we're gonna, we can, we can uh, look at These some, are the crystal tops. Wait, this, I'm going to show that for the color variety. <laughs> yes. You have the really. Is uh, that it mean heated or not? There is no heat. No heat, so it's actually uh, a this pink, is a natural, natural pink. violet. Yes. Great, that's great. And then you have the, the classic the imperial peach topaz, color, and then the yellowish, yellow, yeah. gold color. That's yeah. great. Within imperial to uh, topaz, you have a lot of tonalities. Of, uh, mm -hmm. It starts with yellow, gold color, and then you have. Um, more expensive colors like orange, peach, wine, cherry, till violet. This is great, beautiful. And now, why don't we have a look at some of your best uh, gemstones, if, okay. you, if you don't mind? This one. Of course, that's the, that's the one we first saw. When it we... has a lot of fire. And indeed, it's a, also a bicolored stone. You see it if you turn it around. <clears throat> it starts here with peach and goes till lilac. Yeah, right. Wow. And because of the perfection of the cut, it seems one only color. Can you, can you see the by color, Brian? Yeah, that's great, huh? That's a magnificent stone. That's the high end of imperial topaz. Uh -huh. The most expensive colors are lilac, red, vine red, Blood red. And how, how big is this stone? How, this how is carats? seven and a half carats. Seven and a half carats. Yeah. Yeah. Each year I go to Brazil okay. to produce something new and to maintain the contact to the miners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah. that is what I brought this year from Brazil, the big one with 24 carats. Okay, let's have a look at the 24 carats one. Beautiful imperial topaz from Ouro Preto. 
that's nice. Ground is very rare yeah, within because of the Imperial shape. Topaz yeah. because of the of the format of the crystal pots. Right. The they are the all very slim. So round is yeah. very very rare. Yeah. Cool. Wow, that's great. Thank you very much. Let me have a look at this uh, wine. Wine. It's color. wine color. Yeah. I call it wine. Or salmon. 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 Somo. Somo, oui. Très bien. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you. Maybe you do other shows. Um, next year, I'm coming here yes. to San Marie. Marie again. Yes, of course. So I was walking around the aisles in here. We are in the Gem Pavilion, and something stopped me. It's this nice little stone. Well, little, not that little. It's an imperial topaz. It's almost 17 carats and it's just beautifully stunning. It has actually a bit of pink in it. Uh, if you look into the certificate, it's actually the color says uh, orange, pink, intense, or intense pinkish orange actually in English here. So it's it's really rare stone and it's uh, uh, most likely come from uh, from Brazil. The fun story, there's a fun story behind it. It seems that this stone has been found at uh, an auction in the middle of nowhere in France, very small auction uh, by a gemologist. And this gemologist like actually saw the stones, like, wow, that's, that looks kind of incredible. You know, it's a bit unusual. And the stone was actually set in a brooch to begin with. So the guy, the gemologist decided, why, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that stone and see for myself what it is. So he unsetted it and as he wanted to make sure that was not a synthetic stone or anything like that, he sent this stone to the lab and got the report back. It's actually, yes, it's in the um, Imperial Topaz, but in this nice, rich orange color, which is highly unusual. So the guy did a really good deal here. And so now it's uh, uh, for show in Sainte Marie. And uh, just wanted to share that with you because it's amazing. Here you are, 17, exactly 16.99 carats. Okay, great. So we're here uh, at uh, one of the convention halls here at uh, Saint Marie Amin, and uh, I'm with Penny, and she is the new president of the SMMP, Society of Mineral Museum Professionals. And this is the first meeting that your organization has ever had in St. Marie, I mean. Absolutely. And what does that mean? I mean, why is that important? Well, it's important to make uh, the European curators feel that they belong to the organization so that they don't have to travel to the States to attend our meetings and to network with other curators. So the SMMP has always primarily the been meeting, an American The meetings based. have always been in Tucson and in Denver, which is fantastic. So we have one in Tucson in association with the Tucson show in February and another one in Denver in September, so six months apart. Mm -hmm. And then this is just an extra one for the Europeans, and anyone obviously is invited. They even let Australians in. No, yeah, well, I, yeah, that's maybe nice. they make them presidents once in a while. <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> well, now, as you explained to me a little bit uh, earlier, the importance of the organization is communication, so that you can share knowledge and experience among the different museum curators globally. Yes. Yeah. Someone has already done it before. Mm -hmm. You know, why reinvent the wheel? So we're. We're about sharing our thousands of years of curating expertise with anyone who wants to know. It means better curators, it means more enthusiasm, um, but the whole thing is building on um, everyone's expertise. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you see someone who's done a wonderful exhibit, you can talk to them about the problems, the pros and the cons, and they can improve theirs, and we know the revolution in lighting recently, right, in the last right. ten, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so you talk to people and say, well, we've done this, uh, don't do that, this is our experience, you know, this one, this works, this didn't this work. work, this is a, a really good place to buy such and such, this, is a, uh, this place is closed down, whatever. Right. So the power of the SM SMMP is to build better exhibits and museum experiences for you, and how you, the viewer, can support what they're doing, this very important work, is by going to your local mineral museums 
viewing the exhibits and giving feedback to them so that they know what's working and what doesn't work yeah. and that gets filtered up and it gets disseminated globally so well, everyone can benefit. Museums are not in isolation. We need our collectors, we need our dealers. Mm -hmm. You know, it is a global community as you pointed out in the first instance and we all need to work together for right. for the passion of minerals. That's exactly it. Yeah. We all work for the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Penny, thank you so much. Thank you. Best of luck. All the best. All right. Thanks. Well, that brings us to the end of this year of What's Hot in St. Marie. We're here at the mayor's party every year. He has a great party, and we're celebrating what a great show this was. And so we have a little gift for Monsieur Mayor. It's chocolate-covered macadamia nuts from Hawaii. C'est du chocolat Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rayad. My pleasure. <laughs> so we had a great time, we had an excellent show, and we look forward to seeing all of you next year for What's Hot in St. Marie. Mahalo. <laughs>